and come with the scroll. And your boy, right in the south and back. Charges on the beat. GSA and other government institutions are here uh, confiscating former officials vehicle uh, including the former police RG Pache Sudu uh, the chief protocol to uh, president former president Josh Weah Finambondo uh, so other former officials of government, uh, cars have been confiscated and we are just coming to you live from Singa where the GSA employees and other agencies of government officials are here uh, retrieving government's properties. So please uh, stay with us as we bring you exactly the work of the the GSA and other people here. And so these are vehicles of uh, of Findam Bondo, the chief of protocol to the former president of the Republic of Liberia. Joshua. <laughs> these are the vehicles of the the vehicles of uh, Finambondo. Usually, these vehicles are being used for uh, commercial purposes. You have passengers using these vehicles, and of course, they paid money. So, any moment from now, we'll be talking to um, those from the asset recovery team uh, to speak to us uh, concerning about this process. So, several cars, uh, several vehicles have been packed. Uh, vehicles believed to be for the government, uh, government's properties. <laughs> so there you have uh, Mr. Rabos uh, Wixen. So uh, Imana Gongwe is also part of the. The police, the police people were escorted. The police people, so the government, the police people, let them just land us straight to the field. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes. 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 So this is uh, Mr. Emmanuel Gongwe. He's one of the uh, tax force members. <laughs> Yeah. So these are Finda Bodo's vehicles. They confiscated by the Assets Recovery Tax Force members and the GSA. And they are now taking these vehicles to the head office of the GSA in Central Monrovia. So, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Gongwe is uh, one of the members of the Asset Recovery Tax Force. Uh, Chief, welcome to the media. Thank you. We saw uh, members of the Asset Recovery Tax Force uh, confiscating or retrieving vehicles uh, that are said to be, I mean, I mean, belong to the government of Liberia. Can you please tell us exactly those vehicles that you put confiscated? Uh, uh, who are those? Uh, vehicles belong to what we are we are tracking government asset uh, there are vehicles that people claim to have bought from the government uh, we are checking the document to see as to whether they truly bought this uh, car from the government and some of the documents we are checking uh, they are incorrect uh, so if we check the document of the vehicle and the document is incorrect then we uh, ask the tow truck to carry the car to BDC and pack it, you know, until follow verification. So that's what we are doing. So you can see, uh, this is the Fumon RG uh, okay. So no one is big for the process we are on. Uh, you mean the, the Fumon RG Padre Sulu? This is Padre Sulu car. A special one from the CEO stand down with the spoon and your boy right in the south and then charges on the beat. Indeed, Tun to Spoon to be part of our discussion, Tun to Spoon to know exactly what's happening in Liberia, uh, to form, form part of the national discourse, so um, you get to hear from uh, what the policymakers are saying. This is where you get authentic information about all of the major happenings across Liberia. I'd like to say welcome to another great show. We're here tonight. This show promises to be very fascinating. Call another person, share the show. Let's have a great show tonight. Let's have a great discussion tonight. Lots of things happening in Liberia. This is where we come with diverse views and bring you the issues as they unfold. I'd like to say thanks for joining us. We're live across uh, the internet, Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV. Thanks to the folks on YouTube that have joined us as well. And I want to say special thanks to uh, the many radio stations across Liberia that are relaying this program. We're going to have a great show here tonight. Um, I see the team is already set. Our guests tonight on the program will be Mr. Charles King. Um, you, uh, okay, so uh, we 
we have a lot to talk about tonight and um the best you can do is to join this uh, discussion mr king as you know is former deputy director for administration at the gsa he's uh the former assisting director for administration at the uh he used to uh, yes uh former assistant director at the ss nice eps and then uh he also headed the special tax force set up by former president talbert to recover government vehicles so many years ago at which time a lot of people were not born so uh he's gonna be here tonight he will share his views uh come in with expert views on some of the happenings right now in the country uh the different views the latest decision by the court what does it say about the team and a lot that are happening in the country but uh before bringing him in let me bring on the team i see our sister shirley snay is already here shirley thanks for joining us tonight it's good to have you on welcome to the show thank you thank you so much nelson hi everyone hello to everybody in liberia that know this in the night um good evening good afternoon good morning wherever part you find yourself and please do share the show as nelson is saying let's get a lot of people on because um, Mr. King, anytime he comes on here, he's here to educate us. So I'm looking forward to learning tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let me bring our brother, Mr. Francis Jabate. Jabate, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on tonight. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. What's up to our librarian people? Good to be back. How are you guys doing? Someone said they love the way you position the librarian flag in the background. Yeah, they would like the flag and they start criticizing later on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know her position, the, the flag position is good compared to Sandy. Hopefully he's not watching. They always had the flag uh, turned downward. And I'm like, what's going on? He said, no, the, the country not improving now. The protest. So. He said, no, he said the country, the country was not improving because they were on a CDC. So that's why he turned the flag. But two months into the United Party administration, they may still have the flag in that same position. So I'm like, Sandy, what's going on? He said, the red president can't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to be here tonight, man. And and I want to welcome all of our folks out there in the comment section. Uh, can we recognize a few of them? Uh, Shirley, can you see the uh, comment? You have access to the comment section? Yeah, I see Andrew. I see Prince S. Um, I see, uh, hold on. Well, Andrew, Prince, Princeton, Alice, Antonin, Emmanuel, T, okay. Genesee, K, Agnes, Davis, Words of Mouth. Hey, Words of Mouth, how you doing? I'm good. You know, words of Mouth on the show, yeah. You see, oh, you do Words of Mouth. <laughs> That's a really nice name. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right. And it going so fast. I see Joseph, Josephine Davis, D. Uh, okay. Lali, Rachel Power, Cecilia. Yeah, I think that's what I have here on my end. Okay. I, I can only see them from Facebook because I'm not logged into YouTube. Oh, okay. So from where I sit, I see across all four platforms that we're streaming. How do you get to do that? That's cheating. You need to show me how to do that. No, but once you log in, uh, once you log in, you should be able to see what's happening across all four platform uh, platforms that we're streaming on. For instance, I think you you have access to that, right? Um, you can see the folks on YouTube. Yes, but I'll, since I'm on my phone, I have to go through the comment section on stream. Yeah, I will see it, but it will cover my my screen. But oh. I'm, only, I'm only able to see Facebook and YouTube because I have my laptop will be in front of me and I put oh, okay. it on the screen. But if I do it on my phone, I can see everybody, but it will cover uh, you guys' faces. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Oh, so if it says screen, yeah, that means I can see all the comments. Yeah, if yeah. you do it through stream, yeah, you everything. will see everything. I okay. Want. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, you, you want to pick a few names there and then yeah, um, yeah, I see, um, I guess in Kai, the background, Kai Kai, Fa right here. Kai, Kai Fale, I know, uh, Fale, uh, um, welcome, um, 
Monkonje Nangbe Sonshantie, welcome. Josephine David Yendibo, welcome. Wonkemi Sandolo, welcome. Um, Agnes Davis, welcome. Genesis Cockman, uh, welcome. Uh, Lasana, Lasana Sano, welcome. Abi Ab Abenigo F. Boima, welcome. Uh, let's see. And everybody. Gertrude Kwayeti, uh, welcome. Hassan Hassan, welcome. Andrew Marshall, welcome. Preston Doe, our own sister Lavette Bondo, welcome. Momo Kane, welcome. Dr. Abu Bakar Saliki, Mabendu, Mabendu, welcome. Abu Konoba Fofana, I mean Abu Konoba Fofana, welcome. Timbo Benjamin, welcome. Uh, Moses Colley Jr., welcome. C. Amenvi Clements, welcome. Christopher Wham, welcome. Creme de la Creme, welcome. Uh, let me see on YouTube what we have. Um, Emmanuel Takpajua, Emmanuel Takpajua, welcome. Let me. Alex <laughs> Bar, welcome. Good. 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 Welcome, Uncle Wet, Moses Cully, Susanna Cool. Welcome. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I want to say welcome to everyone. Uh, maybe I can just speak a few. Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Noad, uh, Darwin, you said you're following from Minnesota. Welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. P. I'm from Minnesota, girl. Yeah. P. Wolf is from Boston. He's watching mm -hmm. tonight. Thanks for joining us. I see Dennis Blackie. It's falling from red light. Uh, Dennis, Dennis Blackie, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Alfred, uh, Cole, we appreciate you for joining <laughs> us. And Morris, Nelson, <laughs> Morris, <laughs> Morris, Morris <laughs> Harris is on. Is on. I don't know who Morris is on, but Francis, Morris, on Francis. <laughs> Morris, <laughs> man, be nice, man. Let's try. Say something else here tonight. Some of the names, if you know how to pronounce it, just forget it. I know. <laughs> That's one, Oliver. We appreciate everyone, man. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, it's a good thing that we're here. And um, I just want us to do our opening quickly, uh, just before bringing our guest on. He's all set, he's ready, he's in the background now. Uh, but Shirley, let's tell you your opening, what's on your mind, and then we can uh, bring in our we can move to Francis and then bring in our guest. Well, Francis, I'm grateful. This is Holy Week. So I want to say um, Happy Easter to our people in Liberia and everyone around the world who do have the opportunity to celebrate Easter. Um, so Happy Easter to all of you. And I'm grateful that we are in a Holy Week and celebrating um, Jesus Christ, who I am absolutely not ashamed to talk about any word in any how. So I'm grateful for that. And also I'm looking forward to a wonderful show tonight. Um, I'm especially looking forward to learning from our guests. Um, he usually comes with so much knowledge and wisdom. So I am looking forward to enjoying tonight and also praying for a better Liberia and pray that God can protect our people, especially from the spirit of death. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, Francis, you want to do your opening? What's on your mind? Yeah, you see, Fred Emmanuel said, great job on my name, Francis. So all your Shaka and uh, saying mm -hmm. what I saw, Emmanuel said, I, I, I pronounced the name correct. So that's good. But for me, uh, uh, it's good to be on tonight. And for me, I don't want peace. I want problem always. So I'm going to talk about all the person I will talk about. You can call by. You see how he's a fraud. You saw him on spoon talk today. I don't know how many people pick up what he was he was putting down today. 
The man is a fraud. All Yeke does is make noise. That's why he calls himself opposition. He's a professional opposition. He doesn't stand for anything. If you are a, if you are a, a resident of District Number Ten, Montserrado County, please put, uh, drop a, 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 a yes or a thumbs up in the comment section. Because what I've been telling you, Yeka Kolba is 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 he's supposed to be on like spoon talk, like talking heads like us. He's not. He doesn't deserve getting paid hundred over hundred thousand dollars a year to be doing the thing that he's doing. He's not a lawmaker. Look at let me give you an example of what he uh, of, of, of how he's a, he's a core addict and, and he's a fraud. You can lie today. He can What kind of lawmaker always run around with they say they say? First thing he said they say yeah. the LDEA is uh is uh, uh, entering people's house without warrant. And thank God, uh uh uh, uh Mr. Kuma, uh, Kuma, uh, was, uh Mr. Kuma was on on today to say that's a lie. We all of our searches. We have had warrants. You see, even CEO tried to even twist uh, 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 Mr. Koma's uh, words today, but he had to keep clarifying things. But Yeke will come and say, oh, they say, they say. He said, somebody say. They, uh, okay, if somebody says, as a lawmaker, what you do? You reach to that judge and or to the court and find out, say, I want to see a copy of that warrant. You see? But you don't just come as a lawmaker, you just run around, they say, they say, they say. You see, that's the problem. And why can't they ask Yeka Kolba when he appears in studio? What bill has he put on the floor? Say he became a lawmaker, or what bill has he co sponsored in the interest of District 10 or the Liberian people? But he's yeah. running around the country. Anybody that in power, he against you because he did the Liberian people will say, oh, Yeka for all. Anything he just talk, 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 but no sense he be making. He just it's like you take uh, 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 rice and you throw it against the wall and hope that something stick. That's what you can doing. And I think when you talk about it again, oh, we have a black that is going to uh, 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 deny President Barker the funding for the asset recovery. You can't got him for no black. You can is a follower. He's not a leader. A promise to other uh, opposition, true opposition in there that are trying to uh, 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 stifle or uh, 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 crush President Barker's agenda. So you can say, let me see, let me see what thing I can go and talk against. Let me just see what thing I can go. And... Oh, you get a black here? That's going to black the thing here? Okay, let me join inside your group. And then he running with it like we get a black. You can just a follower. He doesn't put anything up front. So this is still most of our candidate. Just, just vote that man out. That means somebody that will represent you. If you can't want to be talking here like me on, on the late night show right now, let him come do it for free. We do it for free. But don't stay into the house where you're getting paid hundred thousand of dollars. You're broke. Thank you're you, Frank. And you're Francis, there for some reason. Thank you. Francis, Francis, no, 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 no. We, Francis, nah, I hey, Francis. 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 I will go against it. If I had to do my own show, I would do it. But so, Francis, what, what's your issue? What's your issue with the law? Why, why are you always at, at the lawmaker? You know, why are you always at representing Yeke Kolba, Francis? Because Francis, you know what? People always this, say, this Francis, is honorable you're man. supporting Yeke honorable man. This, this man. This man was elected by over, over 10,000 citizens of his district. Over 10,000. You know? Yeah, and, because and, we and the ones supporting him. The lawmaker. We support him, and I'm proud to say I support him. I'm proud to say I use him. I use him to get Josiah out. And unfortunately for CDC, they didn't have any defense. But he won't bring that stuff now to President Barker's administration. Thank you. What Thank you. Do, we'll Thank you. We'll put a clue. Uh, Thank you. Uh, 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 Rudolph, just do your opening quickly because uh, our our guest is already here. Coach King is in the background. Did you, you play, Nelson, did, uh, did you play any video that got my brother fire burn like this? No, I didn't play any oh, video. I was he said, that was his introduction. He said he came. <laughs> the guy is doing his opening and he decided to pick up Boone with the law. And all the praying, I was praying, sir, at the beginning of the show, friends said, did not even recognize any of that. <laughs> yes, but um, I don't understand. It's good to be back again tonight. Um, I look forward to a good show. As always, I mean, we come on here to talk to our people and we come on here to make our own analysis on issues affecting the government and our people. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, our dear brother, for being here tonight. So um, 
I just like to go across now to bring in our guest. Well, our guest tonight is uh, Mr. Charles E. King. Um, and uh, a lot of you here know him. Well, this is not his first time on the show. We've invited him here on several occasions. Uh, he he been able to weigh in his thought on lots of other issues, uh, uh, bringing some real contribution to the national discourse. He's the former director for administration at the GSA, uh, the General Services Agency. He's uh, a former assistant director for administration at the SSS. Uh, I understand is now the EPS, right? And uh, yes, and he's also uh, he also headed the special task force set up by the president, former president Talbert, to recover government vehicles, government assets, etc. And as I saw this, I, 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 I caught myself. I'm, I'm asking myself, okay. I know Rudolph was not born that time, but I'm asking myself. Uh, <laughs> so, as far as back as that was Nelson, which year again? No, 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 born that time. Yeah? No, no, no. Coach King was say more about that. Nelson, even you, even you, you were, you were not born that time, Nelson. So start Come on, but uh, let me, let me, let me, let me. Uh, with no time to waste, I know uh, he needs to rest, uh, so we will not hold him too long. Uh, let me bring Mr. King on. Mr. King, welcome to the show, sir. It's good to have you on tonight. Uh, it's always a pleasure. We appreciate the fact that you accepted our invite to be on here tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you very well. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here and to be invited by uh, Nelson for your honorable uh, program. I always like to be called to to give whatever I can give from a professional point of view on topics that you're all discussing. Uh, there are a lot of times, sometimes I hear you all discussing something and I'm trying to jump in and I, I send the you know word because it's so critical at that time for 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 me to input something. But anyway, uh, I'm happy yeah. to be here and I hope that whatever I have to share with you all, it will give you some better understanding on maybe you know on issues that we face yes sir and and, and mr king uh, we we always open to that we always open to that once there's an issue and 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 you 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 let us know through our uh you know uh, messenger or what whatever we 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 can always provide the, the the space where you can make your valuable contributions and um we think you are a fountain of you know, a knowledge, you know, giving your experience over the year in different areas, uh, you know, the rich professional background you 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 have. Um, it's always a pleasure having you um, on platforms like these where you can uh, weigh in your thoughts on, 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 on some issues. So again, thank, it's thank you. To here tonight, uh, sir. Thank, thank you. And I want to say that there are others of with professional background, even more than me, as in the diaspora. And they are some of those that have been training me and teaching me when I started my career uh, in Liberia. So I give them the thanks because they taught me some things for me to develop. And uh, for example, at that, well, we'll get into the GSA aspect. Okay. Right? Okay, so it's, it's it's good to have you here tonight, sir. And um, I'm glad that we can we can have you to talk on this issue. Um, first of all, I want us to go back before getting to where we are, before coming to the current situation with the asset recovery team and everything that's going on. I want us to go back. When I um, go, going back to the time when you served as head of the special tax force, set up by President Talbert to recover government vehicles. What was it like? Well, did, 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 did we have a similar situation like now where people who served in government uh, were you know, refusing to turn over government vehicles? Did, did, did Liberians have that kind of mindset at the time, you know, where maybe they will hold back, try to get away with uh, government assets? 
what what triggered that decision to set up that to that, that team that you had there at the time by President Talbert? Well, uh, first of all, uh, at that time, the president I was recommended mm -hmm. to the president uh, cabinet that I would be one of those only ones that could be strong enough to to. It was at that time the government had issues regulations that all government vehicles must be parked at the offices after official hours. What, what year was that? Was, yes, yeah, sorry to interrupt. What was yes. what was the year? You can't tell. Oh us. my goodness! Uh, that was Honorable Elijah Taylor was the, was director of uh, the general director general of GSA, and. Um, it must have been between 1970, uh, 1970, uh, 1976 to 1970, yeah, 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 yeah. something like that. I can't remember, but but people like who knows at that time would be able to to okay. uh, identify. I can't remember the year, but it was between 1970, uh, two, three, four, something like that, and 19. Uh, 78 or something like that. I can't remember. Okay. But okay. Was it was the after the rest riot or before the rest riot? No, before, long before, long before. And so they, they, uh, they, they recommended, and President Talbot told him, this man that you're putting out there does not waver back and forth. My reputation was known already, and you can check behind me anywhere else you want to go so they said, no, we want Mr. King. All right. President called me, said he wanted me to take on these responsibilities. Director General Elijah Taylor from the GSA at that time. So we coordinated our efforts and we decided on what steps we would take. <laughs> you come in to laugh now, but that Monday morning, I started, my officers were assigned to me and the first car we stopped guess who it was mm. it was the bread if i'm not mistaken one of the brothers of president talbot <laughs> okay okay one of the brothers close brothers of president talbot my officers look at me and i said stop the car do you have a permit to carry this car home the orders were cars must be stopped uh, parked at the government ministry before you leave the office Mm -hmm. He had no papers. The officer said, well, he said he's president. Uh, he, I think it was an honorable in the house or something like that. I said, no way. There's an order we have. We're going to enforce it. Now, that was the first person. And he got out of the car. He had to park the car. We, drove, we had to take it back to the GSA compound to get proper documentation. But he called the president. The president said, I got nothing to do with it. We told you all that this man would do his job. The president didn't get upset. The House of Legislature, whatever membership he was with, they didn't say anything. They didn't interfere. Okay. Because I asked for specific that my that was my orders. Uh -huh. And when you follow the orders without diddy bopping, you can make it. Okay. Next step was uh -huh. when the cars were in a vehicle. Now, I. I'll stop at that one. I'll stop there because the other question goes into the GSA. As yeah. the director yeah. of GSA, I'll talk that one. Yeah, so uh, now that team, because uh, th there's already an issue at hand. We're going to mm -hmm. uh, uh, dive into that sufficiently. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, I want us to zero in on this whole process back in the 70s, you know, and all of that. Um, what was the process like? You know, like you just mentioned, um, you the, the first vehicle that you and your guys stopped as as head of uh, that that team yeah. was uh, someone permanent. What was the yeah. process like, uh, and, and and how is that? How is it different from what's happening now? Well, in that case, my, the reputation of a person that you put mm -hmm. in charge has to be beyond reproach. He has to have integrity. He has to understand the rule of law. 
He has to understand social issues in the community. He has to understand how to stand before the whoever owns, owns the car and professionally present itself. You don't have to be rude and you have to follow the instructions. Now, when you, we'll go to the next step, which is recovery of items or vehicles that were not turned over to the GSA. This is why I say I straddle, because as Deputy Director General for Administration, it's easy to find out which vehicle is assigned to a government official. And if we found that that government official did not turn in vehicle, and it's, it was very rarely you found that, they turn in a government vehicle. They're no longer in office, they turn it in. Why are you keeping it? So listen now, GSA had a policy at that time also that you could purchase a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can purchase the vehicle, you either have to pay it cash. Well, when I say cash, you have to issue money from the bank, drive, whatever, okay. purchase the car. Or if the bank is loaning you money to pay for the car, the bank is the one that owns the car, not you. You see? So all the documentations are there. Now, I have to... I have to bridge over here now to my position as Deputy Director of Police for CID Affairs. The investigation of government property and theft of government property comes into play. GSA turns over the documentation to the CID and the CID looks at the documentation and if it is determined that fraud exists, or that a vehicle was licensed, was put on another vehicle, or things like that, color changes, and, and then you build your case. You build your case. You don't stop people and confiscate the property. Remember now, I wasn't confiscating a person's pro pro private property. I was confiscating government property. That's a difference. Now, if you have a private vehicle and you say that you're investigating before you, you you will apprehend, before you investigate and find, you're depriving that person of their property. Wow. Okay. So I, I, I want to come in with this one and, and the rest of the team uh, will have time to engage with you and ask you some very important questions. At some point, we'll take uh, questions from uh, the folks uh, joining the show as well. Um, but, but this is very important. Um, uh, and, and again, going back to the process, how it was done yesterday, uh, before now, like you said, Honor President Talbert, uh, were you investigating first before going after those vehicles or trying to um, uh, 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 confiscate those uh, uh, assets that were not turned over? Or did you confiscate the items before investigating? What was the process? As a person who understands the rule of law, mm -hmm. no person's property can be searched or seized unless by judgment of the peers of the law of the land. The law of the land is clear. If you are, suppose if you have a vehicle that is assigned to you and you fail to turn it in when you are asked to, what is the purpose of you holding that? You have not been in legal possession of government property. That's all. Now, when it, you what you do, you refer that matter to the mm. police, criminal investigation division. And when they find the information that they've collected, then they charge you with theft of property. Then you take the matter to the court. Then you so, can so, so there was a whole process. There was a whole process with respect to the way you um, carry on this asset recovery back on a president tolerant. It, it wasn't, but, but okay. Another thing I want to establish is, was there an executive order at the time? What, what, what exactly said, uh, on what basis were you uh, appointed as the, the, the head of that team to recover the asset? Was it based on the fact that you were assistant um, director for administration at the GSA or was it what was there an executive order that empowered that team or you no. and your guys to go on with the process at the time 
If I'm not mistaken, it was an executive order, number one, to, mm. for, for enforcing and carrying out the GSA requirement. Now, at that time, I was not assistant director. I was okay. not even deputy. I was deputy director for administration at the GSA. But before okay. that time, I was not. It was as a result of my performance. Okay. Head of that. Then they wanted me to go to the GSA as deputy director and Honorable Cliff Fort, uh, Cliff Fort Flemister was the director general. Okay. And if you want to know, I didn't stay there too long because he carried my complaint to the president at the time. And he said, and I'm always proud of this. He said, I was too much of a James Bond man. And he wanted, he didn't want me to be there. Because when I was sitting on as deputy director for administration, I made sure everything had to have documents signed. Nothing got out of that place without my signature only. And if it was getting out without my signature, I call it CID to come in. So that's what I am about. So it was an executive order. Now the exact ones, it's been a long time, gentlemen. I can't remember those things, but the official documents will show that. Also, uh, Honorable Elijah Taylor, GSA for the longest, he was deputy, uh, he was director general. He has a whole it, knowledge of information that now, you all uh, can use. Now, was there was there any was there um, any form of resistance at the time? And, and right, right after this one, we're gonna make the round table and, and, and have the rest of the team coming in. But, but, but uh, you, what, what, what the question now? What kind of question was also asked? No, you, you still get plenty of questions to ask. <laughs> but uh, let, let's talk about compliance. What, what, what was it like in terms of uh, compliance? And, 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 and was the team able to maybe confiscate vehicles in maybe huge quantities? Uh, did, you, did, what, what, did, did, did the team meet up with the actual intent or the objective for which it was established? I would say, sir, yes, we did. We had a cars moving in and getting into the GSA and getting proper documentation before they left. The resistance was not like uh, outward defiance. We didn't have that type of resistance. It was respectful, but yet we had resistance. But I was firm. And they went through over me to Director, uh, Deputy Director General Elijah Taylor, because I was in the field sending the vehicles in. And they went in, he said, Ah, I can't do nothing. No, Mr. King has his program and he does not do like this. I, no. And you can ask him. You see, it's the integrity of the person who's heading the force, who's heading the recovery team. And you must know the law. You must understand the law. You don't stop and then go investigate. It's like I see you running down the street at two o'clock in the morning and I, bam, stop you. You must have done something wrong. I put you in jail. No, you don't do that. Okay. You know, and, and we're gonna get to the other aspects of it, uh, but 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 let's take let's take some questions around the table. Um Shirley, you want to come in or Yes. Um, Mr. King, it's, it's always good to have you on. Um, I honestly do look forward to having you on because we get to learn a lot of things. Um, so I know you talk a lot about integrity um, and just, you know, knowing the Lord and kind of like knowing, knowing what you are put, like the position that you are into, like just knowing what you're doing. So if you would give advice to the asset recovery team right now on like how to go about like the process and thing that they need to follow, the guideline that they need to follow in order to, you know, because in integrity is something where you have to stand for as an individual, but the Lord is something that you have to learn and you have to follow. So what kind of advice would you give to them? Uh, again, each one has their own style, but I would say because of the sensitivity of the actions, 
you should have first start at GSA. Where's the list of all the government vehicles that were bought by the government and brought in to the Republic of Liberia, number one. They have the, the vehicle and they have the VIN number. The VIN number you can record, it's already recorded and you have to verify the VIN numbers on the vehicle with the documentation, all right? Uh, very quick, uh, the documentation. When you get that, you ask who were these vehicles assigned to? You got the name of the people that they were assigned to. All right. When you get the name of the people who they were assigned to, have these vehicles been sold? Are they under, uh, for example, do the owners or the, the assigned owners, or, I'm sorry, the assigned minister, has, has he made a request to purchase the vehicle? If so, where are the documentations? Okay. What is the color of the vehicle? What is the color of the vehicle when it came in? What is the color of the vehicle when it came in? That's what you want to find out. Who services the vehicle? Things like that. What 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 repair bills have been made on the vehicle? If the government made repairs or the individual made repairs. Okay. It's a long process, but you see, you are taking steps to respect the constitutional rights of all people, the liberty, equality, and justice. This is the process. All law, all members of government. Now, it's not just the police officers. The Supreme Court of Liberia has stated that all government officials have to respect certain in, uh, the constitutional rights of people. Now, when you get that information, now go to the owner of the person that was assigned, Mr. Minister, former minister, you are given this vehicle. Where is the vehicle? Because, oh, I turned it in. Who did you turn it into? So you follow the paperwork. If he says, well, I didn't turn it in, it's my vehicle, I bought it already. Where's your receipt for the documentation? Do you have it? Do you have it? Is it the bank who purchased it? Well, I got money from the bank. All right, then you get to the bank and you find out, is, this, is there a lien on the vehicle? In other words, is that property, that vehicle for the particular minister or whoever, you know, got the... Uh, the assignment. No, it's not for him. It is still for the bank. Now you go and find out where is the vehicle. Now you look at the VIN number, the color change. No one can change the VIN number or change the color of the vehicle without the express approval of the bank because the bank owns the vehicle. Yeah. You can't even take it out of the country yeah. because the bank owns the vehicle. So you see? So now when you do that, then you find out, no, you have not paid for this vehicle. The bank has no record of it. Then now you go to the court based on the probable cause and evidence that you have to seize the government vehicle and return it to the government. You see, when you go step by step, you get the courts involved. Yeah respecting the constitutional rights of other people. You see, even as a law enforcement officer, the president can appoint you as head of a task force. They can appoint you director of police or inspector general of police, but you are there to work for the people. You don't work for him. I was a deputy director of this, but I worked for the people, not for the president. He appoints you to work for the people. He not expect you to work for him. So I think what I just hear you say to just summarize is to make sure that they are following the constitutional right of the people by going step by step yes. in order to get to um, what is actually happening now where people are on the streets and get in and seizing people car. Yes. The first thing to do first is to make sure that you have that list and yes individually you can meet with the people individually and say yeah. you know you got so so and so car why is it uh and and, and try to follow the process follow after. the paperwork yes. that where the person will go you can't go nowhere so, um so my last question yet and i see our brother putting his hand up nelson you said i have two questions right or just one yeah two questions then we'll okay move so um my last question here doing doing the time that you was serving and you know trying to recover the assets um for the government 
what were some of the things that were included? And I know it's not just vehicle. What what are some of the things that were considered government asset that you were um, trying to recover from the people? Well, at that time, as head of the task force, it was only the vehicles at that time. When I was at when I was the deputy director general for GSA, we had cases there of theft of government furniture, government other government properties. And we had at that time in the process of in referring that a particular case to the CID for them to investigate. But I wasn't there that long to see. I know we saw, I was there when two cases had been investigated and we successfully recovered uh, the government property through uh, while I was at GSA. Now remember at what time I was, when we get to the CID, while I was deputy director, then I would tell you from that aspect, how it functioned. I've had the best of all the worlds, tell, tell you the truth. So I know how it functions. So I hope I've answered your question, Ms. Shirley. Yes, thank you so much. You did answer my question. And I hope on um, um, those that are part of the asset recovery team can kind of take advice from here where they can actually like follow the steps um, to respect our citizen, the citizen constitutional right, but not just, you know, meeting somebody on the street and, and get that vehicle from them, mm -hmm. um, but meeting with them individually, then, you know, listing the steps that they have to follow and make sure that they are following the right um, process and procedure, I guess. To get yes, this process and procedure. The law will always be there, no matter what you do. It boils down to the law. Thank you. Um, Frank, uh, Francis, you want to come in? Uh, yeah, um, Mr. Anthony, King, welcome uh, to the show. We appreciate it if you were to sit up. We know you're, you're on your vacation, but you can... We sit will up, man. We're baking you. Thank you. Um, Francis, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, Mr. King, thanks for being here again. Uh, like our sister Shirley said, it's always good to have you because you are very knowledgeable and uh, we appreciate your insight. For me, I don't have a question. It's just, um, you know... Because everything you said pretty much summarized um, the problem with the process right now. So all I can say, is, even though we are in favor of the process, but they should try to do it right. And part of the reason it's not getting done right is because, I mean, not to excuse anything, Liberia right now, I believe, I mean, it's just out of whack. It's out of whack. So we need to get people uh, things back in order. Hopefully, this administration will break down the, the failing system and put something in place that when, after they are gone, the uh, subsequent administration will have a better foundation, a better footing to work off of. But yes, uh, somebody in the comment section asked if the asset recovery team is just about vehicles. No, this is just the most active part right now. But there are other things, uh, uh, money, uh, uh, houses, um, a lot of uh, things come into play when they talk about asset recovery. Yep. So I do not have any question, but thank you so much for that um, explanation and for that breakdown. And uh, we hope our, our, our the guys can go back to the drawing board and figure it out. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, you got people that are ghost employees. What's happening in Liberia? We, we can say, okay, go to GSA and ask for a list. But you may not. Okay. But the list may not even have some of the vehicles oh. on it. Francis, corruption and you Francis, have employees, right? I'm sorry. No, 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 Francis. You are correct what you're saying, Francis. And thank you for uh, our other communications. But you are correct. There are a lot of ghosts on the payroll in certain ministries, right? That's what you're saying. How to find out. You, you see, if you don't hold responsible and accountable people who are placed in charge of an organization structure. If you don't hold them responsible, then who will you hold? If you don't hold them accountable, who will you hold? When I was, and you mentioned ghost payroll because I want to mention something to you. When I was at a CID as assistant director of police for administration, my chief uh, personnel at that time, uh, Pritchett, Nathaniel Pritchett, Inspector Nathaniel Pritchett. They sent the payroll from the director's office for me to sign as assistant director for administration. 
I said, okay, well, I send this to my chief of personnel. And he looked at the list and he brought it back to me the next day. And he said, director, all these people here on this side are not, we don't have no record on them. So I said, okay, you sure? We double checked. And then I sent it back to the director of police and said, I can't sign it because there's people on this payroll that are not, we have no documentation about. That wow. was the first time I ever saw the payroll and the last time I ever saw the payroll. They never sent it to me again. So again, if the director had told me to sign, I would say, no, you got to fire me, you fire me. But I can't sign something knowing that there's ghost person. So again, Miss Shelley, it goes back to integrity. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, uh, let, let, let's bring Rudolph in. I see Anthony, I see Bila is on. And um, uh, 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 Rudolph, go ahead quickly, uh, two questions. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, Mr. King. Yes. Um, I mean, given your rich background from the police to GSA and having been the grandson of our, of our 17th president as well, yes. um, my first question is going to be a bit off this topic, but I would mm -hmm. like you to to please give me your honest rating of the performance of this government in two months or thus far. I can't do that. And the reason why I can't is because when my professional background, I do not align myself with any government or with any political party. I have to always remain neutral from my professional background. I'm a law enforcement officer. Now, if you ask me specific questions about public safety, I can give you my professional opinion, but I cannot and will not, and I have never gave the opinion of myself with regards to any government, even okay. though we are government or any. I must respect so that the next time you ask me any question, I have to be objective because this is the only person I, I look at in the morning other than my wife. And if I cannot be true to myself and stand in front of your face and say I'm talking the truth, then I'm worthless. I'm sorry. Thank you. I mean, so so the reason that was my first question is because I was trying to establish a pattern with answers. But thank you for your answers, sir. Um, my next question. You know, when I, I listen to you talk about how you are somebody who doesn't bend and you were and you, you did mention integrity. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, uh, like the only person I could think about was Mirab was also Mirabro. I could compare you to Mirabro because we, I mean, we have seen her, we, we saw during the past government, we saw during, during Madame Salif time and even when she, she just started working in the, the Riyadh regime, we saw how straightforward she was. We saw her level of work being done. So um, do you think Given that aspect, do you think that your success with the the tax force was 100% based on your integrity, or do you think it was also based on the straightness of the the system, or the straightforwardness of the system, or the leader at at that time? A system, a system, an organization is only as good as the people that they have in it. Yeah, I mean, the, reason, the reason I ask is because you did mention something that, that there was a, a time where you stopped a vehicle that was driven by the brother of the president, yes. which, which was forward. Yes. And then uh, and then they reached out to him and he said, I, I have not, nothing to do with that. Yes. Right. So that is why I asked that question. Because yes. I mean, I, I feel like. The reason, in my, my mind now, I feel like the reason why you were successful in that role, I mean, you 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 are a, a man of integrity, granted, but I feel like um, it is because those in the higher ups were also people who stood for something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And let me say this. A person, as we have seen, as you have seen in, in, in all government, that person that is up there will look at you and determine if you can be corrupted by them. And if you have principles, 
And you can, you can, as a matter of function, you can help that person at the top to be straight. That is if they want to, right? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, if they want to. If they want to. I never, I've had people, I, I've had people who at the time I was working in government would try their best to, to obstruct my my operation they would dig all behind me but they dug themselves in a hole because they couldn't find nothing because i work for the people thank, thank you, you sir. thank and you sir. i want you all here to ask anyone anywhere anytime who was in the law police at the time i was there in the cid I told him, if you ever find me involved in anything, you better arrest me because you are wouldn't worth a damn to be investigated. You ask them. Thank you, sir. Now, um, 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 let, let, let's take Anthony. Anthony, you have two questions to ask. Can you go uh, ahead? Thank you very much. I will, I will, I will, I will refer to uh, Mr. King as Sa King, the British way, right? The British people say Sa and then say a name. And the reason why you earned this title, sir, I've been following you, you know, from Focus on Liberia to other platform and whatnot. You have stuck to one thing and one thing only, your perfection and the quality of work it entails. Your perfection and the quality of work it entails. You take pride in what you do and you do it to the best of your ability. You, you don't claim that you know it all, but the little you know, you do it to the best of your ability. Right, and that for people of us with career, we admire that, you know, because for too far off thing, a country like Europe have taken people of career, technocraft, you know, for granted. I want to disagree with my with my dear friend, you know, Rudolph, who talked about Mirabura. For me, Mirabura did not set an example of a professional. You are were you asking not a question or you want to reply to me, man? My man, just not my two minutes. Just don't interrupt. I chose whatever way I want to use it. So right. uh 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 yeah, well, so well, Anthony, well, so yeah, that, yeah. That, Anthony, yeah, let, yeah, let me come in. Yeah, so, yeah but Anthony, 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 let, 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 let's do this. Yeah, yeah, Anthony, yeah, you you you're gonna have time. You're gonna have time. Yeah, but Anthony, let's do this now. Let's do this, Anthony. Anthony, 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 we 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 have a guest on the show, right? That is true, but I want to lay so, up so yeah, so uh we're gonna have the time to engage with every single person here to have the disagreements, the regular back and forth, uh disagreement right, me, in analysis, but the fact for the sake for the sake of our guests, let's Stop focus him. on him will you now. will you in your in the interest of doing your job beat people in the street because you want to sell integrity? As a law enforcement officer, I cannot do so. Thank I you. Cannot, you cannot beat anyone and seize anyone. First of all, only the courts of law can authorize this whipping or execution or punishment of someone. Thank Even you. if a person is sentenced, let's say in jail, is in jail, and you go in there and you, if he's sentenced to death on a certain date and time, Mm -hmm. And you kill that person before that day, before that day. you have violated the law. He is right. supposed to be whipped or da da da. You see, you have to respect the constitutional rights of all men to liberty, equality, and justice. justice That's the only all. thing I know. Thank you. That's I, the only I, thing. I, As I, a law enforcement, because people yeah, yeah. Oh, so, 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 of so, 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 so Anthony, people Anthony, Anthony let, let's give the guest a chance to answer the question. One, 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 I know you have a vacation. You have to come down. Let's one, give the guest the chance to answer the question. Anthony. One fact I would like you all to understand is that the law enforcement code of ethics. Yes. You have to understand it as a law enforcement officer. Number one. Thank you. Number two, the first one, may I say what the first paragraph is? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the peaceful against violence and disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all men to liberty, equality, and justice. You have to understand this 
the last part of it, the last part of the goal, and there's two other chapters uh, in between. The last part says, I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public trust to be held only so true as I am loyal to the ethics of the police services. I'm not reading it. It has to be in you. It's a habit. It got to be. You see? So if you have a code of ethics in the government the choir, man. and you maintain yourself and respect yourself, you can walk with pride. Mm. But you have to have integrity. And for those of you who don't know it, I was trained at the police academy in Painesville for nine months. We chop out the grass, we ran behind the cow to kill it, we scrub the toilet, we scrub the, the, the kitchen pots, we iron our clothes with coal with cobo with a coal fire. We had to wash our clothes, we had to wake up five o'clock in the morning to run to shopping and come back again to be ready for class at nine o'clock. So I've had the discipline from Liberia. And regardless of whether the grandson of the 17th president or whatever, I took my profession sound and respected the will of the people. Thank you. Thank and you. And that's and why I you. have to live up to the, re to the rep expectation of my classmates who are from all the different counties. We Thank get you. apart. And for the I record, you also... You are Thank also you, FBI Yeah, yeah, Anthony, correct? Anthony, uh, you have your last question. You want to come in with Yeah, you are also an FBI trainee, is that correct? Yes, sir. I was trained at the 95th session of the FBI National Academy. I'm the oldest living member in Africa. I'm the oldest who has uh, attended police academy. Thank you, Anthony, for your final question. Let's let's move to Bida Swari. Bida, go ahead. You 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 have uh, two questions to ask Mr. King. Well, thank you for having me on the show. And I'd like to say hi to each and everyone. And to Mr. Kim, thanks for the good job. Mm -hmm. And I've been following you always. The more you speak, the more we gain knowledge. And you will not see many of you, or people in your age, coming to such a platform to give back what they have learned in the past. So kudos to you for that. And thank we you, appreciate sir. you for all of your, your relevant stuff. Thank you. Education that you've been giving us. So my question has to do with the issue of procedure in terms of what has been happening basically from the asset recovery. So from your intro and some of the questions my fellow panelists asked, I've, I've tried to understand that there's something wrong. So if you were given the opportunity to advise the current team, what are some of the things that you point out? Are you, you're you coming to church to late. You're coming to church late. That question was uh, has been asked. It has been addressed. So, um, sorry, sir. So, just for the sake of time. So, so quickly to my next to the to to another question. Yes, sir. We saw the Liberian National Police, and I listening to you, right? You talk about you should get court. You should be granted by court before you carry on some of the action. Yes. But the Liberian National Police was a member of the team that was set up. So are you disregarding the aspect of the Liberian National Police as a law enforcement agency, uh, law enforcement body in regards to that process? If not, how should it be in terms of enforcing a law, basically when it comes to the issue of asset recovery? Thank you. Uh, you know, the Supreme Court of Liberia in the, uh, the case of, of uh, Ramo Samukai. You see, I think, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just laughed too much because most law enforcement officers don't understand that they have to keep up, become aware of the court of law. You know, I have a picture of myself at the police in my uniform with the law book in my hand because that is the guide. Now, to go back to answer your question, Romo Samukai, the Supreme Court stated, irrespective of the orders you received from the president of Liberia, you violated the law by going into something, by taking money out and transferring it when you should not have. Now, a statement like that by the court 
law enforcement officers should take heed to that. Because remember, I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember, but maybe you read it about the My Life incident with Inspector, I think it was Commander Kelly, an American general. Remember years ago, there's a picture of a naked uh, little girl in the Vietnam uh, War where she was running like that. That was Lieutenant Kelly in the Army. He said he was following orders. The Supreme Court of the United States said, no, you can't follow orders and do something that's wrong. That's illegal. And it held him responsible. So just because you have a, you assign your officers to a location, they are obligated to uphold the law. We, we're getting back to the code of ethics again, my people. If I was director of police, and I sign my officers, they know they better not mess up on any violation because I will have them up on charges. You're there to protect the people and respect the law. And I will make sure that before I assign you there, I get the job description and the con code of conduct to understand by the head of that task force. Okay. You can't avoid it as much as we want to go. It Thank you, Mr. the law, and I understand the court not taking some action. Thank you, and 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 and, and that's that's where I want to come in. Um, Mikael, welcome to the show. Uh, uh, we we're gonna come to you next uh, to ask your question, Mikael. But Mr. King, in the midst of everything we we're discussing, we thought to go back a little because we want to have a a background. When it comes to this entire process, uh, good thing is that you were involved with a uh, similar process several decades ago. And um, Honor President Tolbert, we wanted to have an idea, an understanding of how this thing played out yesterday before coming to where we are. Uh, we played a video from the start of the show where uh, the, the tax force was seen in the streets of Monrovia parking vehicles, taking them to the, uh, the the GSA compound. And then just a day after, there's a decision from the court to have uh, the team to put the entire process on hold until they can have a conference with the, uh, with the, with the court. There are some issues with respect to legality and everything that is being raised about this process. Um, a vehicle belonging to a company, Gracious Rad, has been uh, the team has been ordered to give the vehicles back. So, Mr. King, where do you stand on this? A lot of Liberians have seen this as a way of weakening this 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 process that is thought to be a very good one, especially something that was triggered by an executive order from the president of the Republic of Liberia. Where do you stand on this? Do you do you think that was a very good decision, and uh, where where do you stand with the thoughts that this will further um, undermine this whole process of asset recovery? We have three branches of government: executive, judiciary, and legislature. Law enforcement falls under the executive branch of government. Would we agree? Uh -huh. All right. When the president passes down an executive order, an order or whatever, and the law enforcement officers or government officials are responsible to carry out the, the action, remember that the president sought to protect the constitution of the Republic of Liberia. Now, if I go and exceed because, oh, I got an order from the president. I got an order from the attorney general, the minister of justice. I can do anything I want. I am held to a higher standard. I am responsible for my actions. Uh, look, I tried to give a little example of, to you all to understand where law enforcement should fit in. When I was deputy director of police for CID affairs, we got an order from the judge to to come to the courthouse for some action. 
for something. He was ordering us to do something. The, my my secretary brought the information to me. I said, what's that? He said, order from the court. I said, well, what will happen? Just put it down, chief. We don't do nothing. I said, what? What do you mean you don't do nothing? You got an order from the judge? So we never bother. I said, no, no, no. This person <laughs> got to bother. They got to bother. So I went to the court and I saw his person outside, the, the bailiff from the judge office. And he said, oh, direct all my group. I have of 10 people around me coming because he cited what we should bring and documents. So he said, oh, what happened? I said, no, the judge sent for me. The judge came outside, he opened the door while he said, oh, Mr. King, what happened? I said, but you sent for me, your honor. He said, what? He asked me my name. I said, Charles Epo King. He said, you see your King son? I said, yeah, my, my father was a lawyer and judge. He said, no wonder you respect the law. I said, I have to respect the law. Again, we have to follow the law. I cannot just do something because the president sent me order to do something. I have to conform. Does, I guess that doesn't answer your question, does it? Does it answer the question, gentlemen? I mean, not exactly, but I guess that's your please, answer. So. Ask, no, 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 no. Ask me to clarify, please. I want to clarify. Nothing, nothing. Tell us second place. I have a question. I just want to clarify uh, now. Uh, 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 okay, so so you 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 uh, you, you, you answer the question, Mr. King. No, uh, no, no, no. Have I answered that? If not, I want to answer it more clearly, please. I, I think that was that was addressed. No, uh, but I, Mr. Bala said it, it. He wasn't satisfied, and I want to clarify anything. Okay, so so what what about the response that you have? No, issued? I think I uh, mean I think um I think. Nelson was being specific, or uh, he mentioned that um, in this case, because I mean, for me, I think it was two two days ago, I came on here and I, I raised these same issues that you are raising here. Uh, I, I pointed out flaws that was in the process. And some people did not expect me to do that because I'm a supporter of this government, but I did. And my fear was that with these things happening, what if? Or property is seized and then they go back to the court and the court tell them that no you you guys should turn it back over to the person my fear was that this is is going to 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 um is going to validate the argument of wish hunt that was my fear and and that is what we what has, has already happened so i was trying to to i mean to hear you being more specific with regards to i mean what is now, now moving forward, because this has happened, what okay. do you think the public is going to think about the process? Okay, so I, again, let me clarify it, because Mr. Nelson mentioned the decision from the court. You have mentioned also the decision from the court. But that's what I said, you have three branches of government. The court decides. I cannot get up and say, because I'm inspector general of police or because I'm a, I've given a mandate by the president, I can do what I, you cannot. We are bound by the law. And if, and, and with regards to witch hunting, quote, no matter where and who is involved, if government property has been given to you and said, this is government property to be used when you are in office, when I leave office, you have to return the government property to me. It is your, it is the people's money. It's not my money. Now, if I gave you something from my own property, ah, then I can force with you for it, I'll let you keep it. But this is government property. You have to turn it back and give account for it if you can't find it. So again, Mr. Bala, have I, Again, answer the questions to everybody that the it's law okay. comes in. Yeah. It's, yeah, the it's law okay. has taken its course. Why would you? Know, uh, thank you, Mr. King. Um, th that issue was addressed. Uh, thank you, sir. You know, uh, uh, um, we have our brother, Mikael. Mikael, uh, kindly put your two questions in, uh, together. We're going to bring you on shortly. Vasco Smo is in the background. He's coming on as well. But uh, Mr. King, relative to the question I asked, I, I, I was a bit distracted when you were answering the question because I, I wanted to pull out um, something specific in um, the executive order. Let me see if I can have this one. 
Why are you looking for that? Yes, yeah. Can you permit me 30 seconds, please? I have a question. Um, then, then let's let's give the time to Mikael because he hasn't spoken since he came on. He's just okay, sitting. Well, I just yeah. been asking if it's, it's if it's permissible or so. Yeah. So so let's let's give the time to Mikael to ask his first question, and then we can bring Vasco. And Vasco, welcome to the show as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Mikael, well, the floor is yours. I'm I'm gentlemen. How y'all doing? Uh, hello to everybody here. Uh, Mr. King, this is my first time seeing you, and I, you know, uh, happy to be here tonight and have a talk with you. As we see, we have some elderly main the host tonight. I didn't think we'd be going the right way. I have some questions. Well, I just want to know. It just I don't know what I, I want to make statement. I want to ask question, but just listen to what I had to say. Well, the access thing we already know. This is not secret in Liberia now. Uh, the president appointed then people been going in you know, the news been all over the country and it been discussed over radio that invited them to spoon talk and people asking questions how you go about you know uh uh uh, uh, uh recovering the government assets and all that and you know the news been all around town now coming from that people already know that they have some government property and all that, and they've been saying over here, if you have government property, start turning it over and all that. Now, the assets recovery team has started doing the job the president, you know, gave them to do. Now, they go in the street, try to stop some of the government property to, you know, to take it away from people who, I guess, in violations of not turning it in on time. Now, it happened, this is a process. The whole thing is a process that going on. Now, the process in which they started collecting the government thing, why, 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 why the court could not call them like in at least like uh because no, they all work together. Because at the end of the day, when the assets recovery get all the evidence they want, they're gonna present it to the court, and those people will go through the court system to be converted or not. Now why the court would come outside publicly and just i mean openly say to the public that hey what did they were wrong return the people don't you think they're weakening the the the, the, the thing that the president have put together i mean we all knowing knowing the fact that how librarian people behave when it comes to things like that don't you think that the assets recovery team will ever ever going to 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 to, to, to achieve a goal that's my question Thank you. Uh, I like your question, as I've been doing with others. You see, when I was, again, we, because we're dealing with the law, mm -hmm. you, see, you brought up the court. There is a process with the rules of evidence in a criminal trial. The court, Supreme Court of Liberia has stated no property can be searched or seized but by probable cause or the rule of law. It is stated in the Supreme Court decision of the United uh, of the Republic of Liberia. No person shall be seized, no property seized, blah, 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 blah. Now, my agent at the CID, we had what they call a prosecutive summary. If you ask any CID member who was there at the time of my administration, no one, nothing went to the court unless through the prosecutive summary. In that case, we briefed the case. We have what happened, what happened, and we listed the evidence that we had to connect the suspect to the crime that we were prosecuting. That's the corpus delecti of a crime. We also had theft of government property. That was a division on its own. Theft of government property. You collect evidence before you go to arrest or seize property. Now, if you don't do so, this is when the court comes in. The court of law is to protect the people of the nation. It has to rule the So, so that, that brought me to my second yes, question. Please. So, okay. so basically, the assets recovery team had no evidence. They just jumped, I mean, into, I mean, they just went after those guys because they kind of assumed that they had government. I, I don't really understand what the manager said. I don't, 
I don't know. No, let, let, what... Let's give the guest the time to respond to it. I, I mean, wait now. Nah, because, I, listen, the, the, I the man know. just said, let's, I mean, we're having a conversation here. He said the people needed a rightful paper to go after those people when they get them to present it to the court and say, yeah, is it? This is why we went after this person. Right? Is that what I'm hearing? That is the proper step that you invest, you investigate an issue first when you collect the evidence and you charge the person. Okay. And you then now have a criminal case against the person. Through the court process. Well, you are going to go. You are prosecuting the person. You know, M M Mr. You, King, you listening to you, through the court process, not going to the yes. house and picking up the so, 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 so listening to you, oh. uh, listening to you, I know you're not, in fact, you're not sounding like Anthony here, who is a politician, the political guy that supports the ANC, Mr. Cummings did not win, and so he's he's very devastated about that. You're not sounding like Vasco, who supported the CDC, and CDC did not win, he's, he's, he's frustrated about that, but back to the issue, just uh, on, on, on a more serious note. Well, but he's not the people, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. On a more serious note, on a more serious note. You gotta give me more time. Yeah, what? you have time. After the show, you have some time. But 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 uh <laughs> let's let's do this, right? Mr. King, I'm constrained yeah. to pull this up. Um up here is a document, it's a portion of the executive order that was released, that was issued, that uh gave rise to this whole asset recovery team. The first portion there, and I just want to read it out for the sake of our, our radio audience yeah. across the country. Yeah. It says, whereas, given the gravity of this situation and the need to immediately restore lost assets in order to ensure economic stability and development, it is imperative to issue this executive order that cannot await the, uh, the, the lengthy legislative process that may derail the process of asset restoration. I appreciate the fact that at some point in this conversation, you referenced uh, the aspect of the three branches of government. We have three branches of government. I'm trying to get this off. We have three branches of government and everything and, and so on. But this executive order, that portion that I just read, is keen. The president was being keen on why the need to immediately restore, uh, uh, retrieve those assets. Yes. Immediately. Yes. And in fact, it was because of that, it is mentioned there, that they, did, they didn't want to follow the lengthy legislative process. They had to use executive order, the other means of getting, getting around the situation. And again, um, they don't want to go through through the many bureaucracies. And, and I know you're coming from the, uh, the the background of being an investigator, a well seasoned, experienced investigator, and and, uh, and all of that. But what what can you say about the fact that this executive order was keen on immediately restoring uh, or, 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 or retrieving those assets, not wanting to go through too many bureaucracies. Oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. But it was keen on the fact that they had, they had to immediately re uh, 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 retrieve those assets. And because of that, they didn't even go through this le uh, the legislature. They had to use executive order. Please, let's put that up again. Let's put that up again. Yeah, so let me put it up again. Now, let's read the task force has the following mandate. What is the first one? Okay, the first Identify one. Identify and trace how all of Liberia's stolen and suspicious uh, assets within and out of the borders of Liberia. Right. I, didn't know that they, I, I didn't know the sites were that sharp. My yes. Constitute <laughs> investigative panel to probe into Liberia's stolen and suspicious assets hmm. initiate immediate criminal prosecution uh -huh. and civil litigation where applicable on behalf of the government of Liberia. Uh -huh. Upon adjudication, uh -huh. return, uh -huh. upon adjudication, return confiscated assets to Liberia. 
place travel and other restrictions, blah, 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 employ diplomatic so they 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 measures. Back. Just the one, two, and three is what I'm talking about. And there you go. Four. Now, you can move that off the screen. Okay, let me try to get it off. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, Did you follow the executive order? Yeah, we have a guest on the show. We were engaged, but we have a guest on the show now. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. King, sir. You read the preamble of his order. But this is the instructions to identify. First, all stolen and suspicions. Now, in investigation, you have probable cause. Probable cause will lead a reasonable and prudent man to believe that a crime has been committed. Filing of VIN numbers, changing identification of a vehicle in, uh, and documentation and all of that. That is what you do first. When you investigate, because you have to comply with the law. The president tells you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to retrieve all government properties. So right away, you say, bam, okay, that person there got a government property. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. How can you do so when you don't know anything about the matter that you are in, that you are going to be seizing? Now, I said you have to get a court order if you want to seize, but if you have if you are investigating a crime and that crime has been committed and you have all your evidence, you can go ahead and arrest the person and get a, 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 a rid of a rid of seizure from the court. But you have to comply. If you don't comply with the law, the courts can come in to protect its citizen. Okay, so Mr. King, let me ask this question. Uh, no, have I answered that? Carefully. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, 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 has triggered, that has triggered the next question. That has okay. triggered the next Please. question. On the on a, on a, uh, criminal investigation. Yes. Do you uh, arrest, do you arrest uh, before um, maybe uh, 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 prosecuting the person? Oh, okay, so that, that's the way I want to put it. Okay, so do you arrest? Because this is the thing, right? Uh, assuming John Brown is caught in the act, he's accused of this, that, or maybe he was seen murdering someone. Mm -hmm. You want to take on that case. Are you going to investigate, carry on all the investigation before taking John Brown to jail? Or are you going to arrest John Brown and get him beyond bars while you do carry on the investigation relative to this particular asset recovery team? That, that, that's where my question is coming from, sir. You have to come around and let's be a little bit more clearer with regards to the murder or the crime. Okay. Uh, let me explain something to you. Supposing we say Mr. Gay mm -hmm. observed John Brown shooting Peter Paul. Yeah. All right. Mr. Gay observed this. So we go to investigate and look for this person who Mr. Gay said he saw shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. We will find that person, ask him mm -hmm. some questions. Still, we are not going to just accept Mr. Gay's statement that he saw John, oh, but Mr. Uh, King, or Detective King, I saw that man, I saw, I saw, so we have to investigate Mr. Gay. Does he wear glasses? Where was he at the time he saw this man? Does he have any animosity between this man that he is accusing? What, we have to investigate Gay himself, Mr. Gay himself, before, on top of that, where was this man at the time? Where was he last night? Does he have gunpowder residue on his hand? Information such as that, and before anyone say, I don't want no one to tell me, say, we don't have no scientific laboratory court in Liberia to do it. We can do it because we have association with the FBI and other criminal laboratories around the world. So it can be done. Murder and all, it can be done. So again, you have to investigate. If you find a suspect that you can place him to the scene of the crime, then you have him arrested 
And if you, he's connected, you prosecute him, you send him forward for court prosecution. But you cannot arrest somebody and say, prove you're innocent. That's what they do in Liberia. They say, we arrest you, we charge you with something, now you got to prove you're innocent. Prove you're innocent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I will say that. I will say that again. I must mention, and I ask you all to please, you know, the free time man said, who place you to come out? Mm. I want you to check behind those people who were there under my administration. Every single one of them knew very well that they better have evidence before they put a man in the jail at, at, at uh, Mama Point and prosecute him within 48 hours. No one is kept in to was kept in my cell after 48 hours. If you didn't have any charge against him in 48 hours, you gotta let him go. I can verify that and you can verify what I say. I challenge Thank anyone. You, um uh let, let's have Vasco to come in. Vasco has been sitting for a while. Uh, thank you, Mr. King. Uh, I mean you are a wise man. I've been sitting here listening to you. I just want to appreciate you. You have put to bear some of the arguments we've been having over here a few days when it comes to the, this asset recovery team. So my question to you now is this. We saw some testing cap yesterday that was seized by this asset recovery team. Let's assume I own this taxi, those taxis and then I was of uh, working in the past government. Okay. And my test is moving around, generating funds. Yes. There are people that work for me. And those those tests care was seized yesterday and they obstructed my operation. Can that can I take the asset recovery team to court for what they did to me yesterday? You can seek the court for protection against anything that has been done to you. That is what the court of law is for. If I, if anyone who's in government, whether in and out, tell you something differently, they're not telling you the truth. You have the right to go to court. That's what the court is for. They will hear what you have to say. If they don't agree with you, they don't agree with you. But you have to take the matter to court. You cannot take it on your own hand and go forcefully take the item back. No, then you have created another problem. And Mr. Boyu, you shaking your head. I love conversations. He, he, he has some concerns. He, Please. He, you have but, the time but, to come. But, but, yeah. I, I can, I, can, can I, can I, can I, I No, no, but Vasco, Vasco needs to end. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I apologize. Go and get yeah. I'm sorry. So Vasco, Vasco has a second question. Please. Okay. My next question is this. A <laughs> uh, lot of people think that because the president issued an executive order. So based on that executive order, and I'm a member of the asset recovery team, can I just go out there because the president has issued an executive order and start to act and start to do things because the president has issued an executive order and I just get in the street now and because I'm a member of the asset recovery team and I start to just do things on my own? The Supreme Court of Liberia has stated, and we go back to the law, the Supreme Court has stated that you cannot, you are not protected from committing an illegal act just because a superior of yours told you to do it. It's not acceptable. That is according to the Supreme Court decision in Liberia. You see, again, I'm so sorry, guys, if you feel that I should be talking something else, and I don't think so. I can only advise you according to the law because that is the final arbiter and the Supreme Court is the final decision making of the law of the land. You Thank have you. to remember the law of the land. I cannot say anything else that contravenes the law of the land. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. So, 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 uh, but this time, we're going to have the time to uh, ask one question ish.
we're making the final round. And then so we will start with our brother Francis. Francis. But I asked for 10 seconds on on Nessie. Yeah, we're we're coming to you next. So you just I mean, for me again, I have no question for Mr. King, uh, Mr. King because he always answered questions before I even ask. But I would just use my time to just uh for lack of a better word, dismiss some of what uh, one of our colleagues want to prove here, especially when they talk about the uh the the court uh dismissing or, or asking that the taxes be returned that is in no way i don't know how people are reading that document that came out in no way did the court say as a recovery you are wrong uh or you are right and uh the the company of the taxi you are wrong or you are right the court is saying put us uh pause on this let's investigate further so i know a lot of us want to take victory laps around here we have uh, uh we are in our corners because we are all in corners yeah, here yeah. Because, uh, and so we want to uh, take victory lap say oh the asset recovery team is wrong the court said you're wrong there's nothing the court did not say the asset recovery team was wrong or the company was wrong so let's not try starting victory lap here so mr king thank you so much for uh for your your wise input and uh, i have no question for you thank you uh, i would like to say to you uh mr francis thank you you are right. The court did say that they they can. You can always bring back the proper process. That's what the courts are for. The for the courts protect the innocent and the, and the victim and the victim. That's what it's there for. And that's right. why if you are true to your investigative techniques. You would take pride and say, "Let's go ahead and investigate." Let's go to the Let's court. Yeah, it because I will win you anyway. Because you have your ducks in order. Mm. See, you have your ducks in order. Look, it's a beautiful thing to take a case to court. I had my officers, detective, proud of the fact that they could go in. And something else I did when I was at the CID, I invited judges for coffee break with the director, and I invited all the CID officers from. Monrovia and its environment to come down, Bummy Hill as well. And my first judge was, guess who? Edmund Walsler Shannon. And uh, Anna Walsler, the, uh, the, the judge, strong, powerful woman. And I had my officers ask her questions. And she told him the reason why cases get dropped out of court and your thing is private is because your investigators in the past don't do things correct. And one of my officers was the late Lemuel Reeves. He was there as a detective. And based on that, uh, based on that program, he went up to law school and took yeah. law. You have to develop your men. You have to develop people under you who you're responsible oh. for training and developing. So let's take He's Anthony. More than you. I'm sorry. Anthony, I got, I got your one question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anthony, your one question quickly. You know, if I was young, I was going to go back to join the, 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 the LMP just because of uh, um, uh, Sakin. Look, let me say this, right? Sakin, I want you to elaborate on the executive order now, number two and three. Because what I'm looking at here, I think. Is that this a SAR? Yes. The, you mean a Kisi SAR? Or what? Yeah, that is, that, is the British, the that is the British way of honoring a person. Oh, you mean, sir? Saying, Such as. Yes, yeah, the oh, same thing. SAR okay. or sir. It's the same thing. But uh, let me just say this. Right? Know, you know, in Liberia, now they distract you a bit. In Liberia, when you say sir, somebody else is like kissy. Oh, okay, <laughs> sir. Let me say sir. In a Liberia, you can say sir. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Let's let's go back to the quote unquote executive order that everybody's referencing. Mm -hmm. President Buaka is very intelligent and so law abiding person and gave them a TOR, a term of reference of that executive order. Yeah. And he clearly states. That is, you follow this this protocol, reference two and three because two and three speaks clearly about going to court and making sure that they they, they follow due process. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell them go seizing people thing in, in, in the street, and they clearly violated that order from the president. Can you speak to that, please? If they oh. is it a question or a statement you just made? No, because. Because it is a question, line two and three of the following thing that were listed on the executive order 
clearly speaks about them following the court process that the court should get the order before seizing. Uh, uh, not read it, TNC. Oh, read really it good. Let's let's go on. Number one, said, line two and three. And trace. Let read line one. Liberia's, yeah, but that's what uh, Mr. King is reading, sir. All of Liberia's stolen and suspicious assets within and out of the borders of Liberia constitute investigative panel to probe into Liberia's stolen and suspicious assets. Now, let's go back to this. Let's, you can move that. Let's go back to the CID. If I was in Liberia at the time of this needing to be done, I would have my officers go ahead and investigate what, where, who, why, how, and why. Five W's and one H. And one H, yep. Okay, that's basic. When they investigate, they will get the documentations and everything to put evidence together because you have, for example, theft of property, uh, the Liberian law, theft of property, uh, and converging property to your personal use. They have what you call the corpus delecti. The corpus delecti is the body of evidence, the elements of the crime of such and such a thing. Okay? So if they call, if for example, and I'm going to throw this out because I teach this also. If the corpus delecti, listen carefully now. If they listen carefully, everyone listening? If the corpus delecti of the crime of burglary is breaking in the house of another during the nighttime, removing that from personal property, converting it to your own use. Okay, that's burglary. Now, when you catch someone in your house, you grab him, the roll. Do you charge him with burglary? You see, the corpus delecti of trespassing is what you will use. Being in the property, on the property of another without authority. Correct. That without is, permission. I beg your pardon? I said without permission, yeah. Yes, without permission, sir. That is the corpus delecti, the elements of the crime of trespassing. You cannot charge him with burglary because the elements of burglary is breaking in the house of another in the nighttime after six o'clock, removing the property therefrom and converting it to your own use. You can't use that charge. Because you were in the house when the person was there. No, no, because he never removed the item. He has to remove the item. Those are the elements. That's what you call the corpus delecti of the crime of burglary. The corpus delecti of the crime of trespassing is being in the house of another on the premises without permission. Mr. Rowe, did you have permission? No. Bam, you arrest him and charge him with So, so all I'm you, making the argument so, now. So, so, Anthony, you have one question. Yeah, but uh, please, let me get, let, let, uh, ask for 30 seconds, you need to get rid of me. So, all of us are making the argument now that the current justice system of today does not commensurate of the idea of Mr. King. People are making a comment. What do you say to that, sir? If the law today Mm -hmm. Does not coincide with me. No, does not coincide with the with your your knowledge of the law enforcement. Your knowledge of the law enforcement does not coincide with the current day of the justice system of Liberia. That's why other people are writing. But what the do you justice say to system that? hasn't changed. You still have the law of the corpus delecta of the crime. You still have a crime that is already on the books. All you got to do is find the elements of the crime to arrest the person and charge him and send him to court. It's Thank you, it hasn't changed. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, no, I don't know where, where Rudolf is coming from. I am right uh, here. No, no, you're not right here. You're all the way here. No, I was, here. I was in it. Uh, 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 sure, let, let's hear Shirley. Shirley, can you come in with your question? Just one question each now because we want to go to the phone lines. I think Anthony already asked my question, so I'm not going to repeat it. So just... <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, so is Vasco. Vasco, you want to you, you have any one question? So we'll go to the phone lines. Yeah, um 
my question is, I just want to say something on what my brother Francis said. Okay? Francis said... Is that a question, Nelson? Can you, guys... I just want to respond to Francis. Francis, Francis responded to me. No, no, we, we have a guest that we're responding to now. Okay, when well, we come back... I, so I, the I guest is responding yeah, to issues reserve, now. So when we come reserve. back... When we I come back, we we'll engage. We we'll engage. We were yeah. certainly yeah. engage. It's gonna get. It's gonna get hot. We we'll engage. Let's 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 complete this uh, round and um, go to the phone lines. Give Mr. King the chance to uh, go and rest, and then we we can continue the show. Uh, Rudolph, you want to come in quickly? Yes, my one question, uh, Mr. King. Uh, do you do you think that? Uh, uh, my question is 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 there a difference between a president giving an, ins an instruction to a cabinet minister, as in the case of Brandon Samuka, versus a president issuing an executive order? For example, the tariff on, on I mean, the, the order on the tariff of rice during Madame Sadiq's time and, and uh, that of President Weah. Do you think that there is a difference? If so, can you please explain what, how you, like, your understanding to us of that difference, just to, just to clarify for the audience. I'm, I'm sorry, I would not be able to go that level because my knowledge of constitutional law and in those areas, I don't have any knowledge about that to advise you properly. So I want to remove myself from that. I'm Thank sorry. you, sir. I Thank mean, you, sir. Nelson, can I just Thank say something you. real quick before I leave, or uh, before I can, my time, my time can be done? Because the reason why I ask this question, because in most of your response, you 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 were using the case of Brandon Samuka. Like, if the president instructs you to do this and it goes against the law, I mean, you then you will have to go and answer questions to the, the court. So, so that's why I ask you if so you can help us explain your understanding of the difference between an instruction to a cabinet minister and um, an executive order. That's why. Okay. I no. No. I I appreciate that, and I want to clarify why I couldn't answer that because you mentioned executive order and something else with the brahmo samukai case i was referring to the orders being given to someone by their superior to do something that is illegal so you cannot use that for this case because this is an executive order case that's that what is, i said that's, I, where, I, that's I, where i'm coming from yes i'm not knowledgeable about that aspect because you're going into another realm of constitutionality. But I answered that one on Somukai because it related to a police officer taking orders to do something illegal. And the Supreme Court of Liberia has ruled that just because a superior gave you an order to do something illegal, you're not absolved from it. Thank you. Thank you. You sir. understand? That's the, 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 what you call it, uh, uh, executive orders, are administrative and political and governmental and constitutional. Yes. I can't talk on that. I don't have the experience in that field. That, and that is what I, I thought, and which is why I disagree with you using that incident to answer questions relating to, relating to this issue. Okay, yeah, I couldn't use that. I'm only answering a question as to the law enforcement officer and the performance of their duty. That's all Thank I'm you. relating it to. Thank you, Mr. King. Um, so, Bida, you want to ask your one question, and then finally will be uh, Mikael. So we'll go to the phone lines. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. King, for all of the education. And I want to ask you, based on, because I think there's some level of disagreement as related to the process. I've listened to you answering questions and all of the premises that you leave. Based on your experience and a lot of knowledge that you have, as regard to as a recovery and law enforcement and basic knowledge, right? Yeah. Are you really, are you willing, uh, really to give your knowledge a comprehensive composition to this government, like recommendation to this asset recovery thing? If I'm asked, I'm here, I'm always available. I always give you <laughs> And they have others uh, besides me in the diaspora who are more qualified than I am as well. I'm always willing. I mean, I'm here talking to you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mikael? <clears throat> well, uh, Dita Deking, thank you for your knowledge tonight. Uh, 
But I want to ask the question. Some, I guess, some someone might have asked the questions, but I just want to understand clearly coming from the law enforcement aspect of it. Yeah. So if I ask the question, you shouldn't say, "Oh, the question being asked quadruple time." I just want to understand because you have to pass on knowledge. So when I go out in the society tomorrow, I'll be able to use the right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, let me let me try to create a scene here, right? That that, that consider. There's a crime being committed. You understand? Yes. A crime being committed, and you know the law enforcement had identified the suspect of the crime. Okay, is it is it necessary, or is it necessary to arrest the the suspect until proven innocent? Who? Let me let me make sure I understand you. A crime has been committed. Yeah. And the officer the, arrest the person. No, 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 no. no. The crime has been committed. Uh-huh. And the suspect has been identified. Yes. You understand? Yes. Okay. Then my question is: can the suspect be arrested until proving innocent? <laughs> <laughs> because just to identify somebody that you come, you, you no. might have been the, the, because that's suspect though. Yeah, no, no, no. I know what you're trying to say. Right. And I've been all through that before. If you have a suspect to a crime, yes, you have you you don't necessarily have to arrest that suspect right away. You have to do investigation. This is where your investigative procedure will place him to the scene of the crime. Number one, problem. motive, opportunity. Anthony, I'm not talking to you. That's what motive. I have to and okay, well, sorry, sorry for that. That's what I said. The suspect been identified. So, 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 so guys, let's 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 no. give Mr. King the time to answer the question. I don't know why, Mr. Mr. Anthony. I don't know you as a lawyer. I, you know, if, even I'm if you, Mr. King, I want to understand this. You understand? You have Wait, a help me out. Yeah. When you have a suspect, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you have all the evidence as yet. Not necessarily. You can have a suspect, but if the person, if you don't have evidence to connect him to the scene of the crime, what are you arresting him for? Because he's suspect? So I can suspect you. I can suspect anyone here. Does that mean they are guilty? That they are responsible for the crime? I can't hear you. He's, 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 he's off. Yes, I muted him. Oh, okay. But I just unmuted you now. Go ahead, sir. Mikael, you were saying something, Mr. King. They didn't, they didn't... Oh, I'm saying we identified the suspect and we arrested the suspect. Now, it's, it's, it's our duty to go, you know, to, 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 for the suspect to be proven innocent or guilty, right? No. You're, once you investigate, mm -hmm. if you have a suspect, you investigate and you arrest him with all the necessary evidence, you have right. to take him to court. And That's it's your responsibility to prosecute him. Until okay. proving guilty, because it, it but the be... proving guilty comes from the court. The of court course, I know can. that. I, I'm you... trying to link something here. No, yeah, but you don't understand. link something. Just try to ask me from an investigative professional investigation. I'm giving you. You yeah. are responsible to prosecute the case. Right. You're supposed to have all your evidence to take to the court of law, and it must conform to the rules of evidence, the laws of the. Of uh, of that particular charge, but the rules of evidence, which is which which, which which relevant, material and competency, it has to all be related, in order for you to present your case in court. And if it's a jury trial, the jury decides. If it's a judge trial, the judge decides. But Thank you, you very much, Mr. King. Okay, Thanks Mr. a King. lot. Uh, and, and we, one more, to the and, and one thing, one more thing, uh, more, one more thing more. Educate these people. Uh, 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 one Mr. thing more. I'm not lawyer, but keep quiet. Eh. One thing, one thing more that is important. Not just because someone identifies someone as a suspect. Remember the code of ethics to protect the innocent against deception. Yeah. that? So you are responsible to prosecute the guilty, the suspect, but also to prevent someone from being falsely accused. 
So someone brings a statement to you and say, oh, I saw somebody do something like that. And you just go arrest the man. No, you got to investigate. You have to protect that person as well. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, sir. Let's let, let's go to the phone lines, folks. This is the late night show, the late night policies on Spoon. Uh, the entire panel is here. Mr. King is our guest. And of course, uh, Mr. King um, here Thank tonight you, is been responding to uh, questions from across the panel here. And um, he's been talking uh, basically on the issue that has to do with uh, the asset recovery and other uh, issues with law enforcement surrounding that. Uh, so we will go to the phone lines and take your calls here tonight on the show. Uh, let's see if we take uh, our first call from the local line. Hello, you're live. Your name and where you call from? Yeah, so... Hello, good morning. This is Bella Imana H. Seaton of on District 13, Topo Vila, the Briefy side. Go ahead, sir. Yes, or uh, my privilege. Having heard the discussion mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the expose as was displayed by Mr. King, the professional man, I would like to speak my point as well. Go ahead, please. Yeah. With, with regard to uh, all of what I've been said, um, and uh, the, uh, our dear uh, president, or call out yeah. the local line. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, like I was, I was saying, uh, Mr. King has said it all. Uh, this is what I am proposing that uh, all of the men that have been uh, given the opportunity to do this following up should please work in line with the law so that. Thank you. Our dear president left cannot be looked at ugly. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the minute time. Thank you. Let's go to the WhatsApp line. Hello, you like your name and where you call from? Hey, Nelson. It's Tommy from VA. Thanks for taking my call. And thanks to the panelists and our guest, Mr. King. Um, just a couple of observations. Uh, Nelson, I think a lot of us Liberians see the executive order, the presidential executive order, as the law of the land. It isn't. Um, the Supreme, the Constitution, still is the supreme law of the land now there's a reason why we have three branches of government right there are three separate but equal branches so the president's executive order cannot infringe on a right or go against any constitutional right that the citizens have and the judiciary has the responsibility to check and balance the executive and so what the judiciary was doing in this case is making sure that the president executive order does not go against the right of a common citizen, whether it's freedom of speech, freedom of movement, or whatever the case might be. And my last point is this. I was listening to Spoon today, and somebody mentioned, well, it's going to cost the government a lot of money um, to give those items back to those folks and then, you know, take it again if they found that they were in error. The judiciary doesn't make its decision based on that. It follows the law. Okay. And so we have to keep that in mind, right? Three separate branches of government. The president is not above the law. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you very much. Let's read and take this person from uh, the local line. Hello, your name and where you call from? Good morning, good morning, Nazi. Yeah, go ahead quickly. Let's hear you. Yeah, this is Danielari P. And I call from Far Forty, Congo Town. From Congo Town, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to congratulate your your, your studio guest. Yeah, don't wait for us. See for the access recovery team. We all know that these people have to, people started on a, on a one note. They know what did well for themselves. You want to say, when the president gave you instruction or what they to do, you need to study yourself. Go by the law. You see, you need not for things to go by law. When you go by the law, you will not be wrong, my brother. Thank so you. if you just leave the law, we're going to do things because you are careful, you'll be doing the wrong thing. Thank because you, sir. Because the people that you're starting the wrong thing, they should go back to the law and start the right, the right thing. Thank you, sir. And let's let's... people from cars on the street, they think that they're doing problems. They should go to the law and do the right thing so that this country can succeed. Thank you. Thank let's you, my brother. Yeah, and take this person. Hello, your name and where you come from? Good morning, Nelson. How are you? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. I'll call you for an offensive reading. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for the uh, discussion, and uh, thanks to Mr. King for uh, his brilliant presentation tonight. Uh, as a list to the uh, asset recovery uh, co committee set up by the president, 
I think in my mind it's a good, uh, it's in the right direction. And uh, I just want to call on all Liberians to embrace the process as it is not a wish fund. As many uh, uh, traditions, I will tell them, and tell that to be uh, a wish fund. I think the, the, the past government started the process, and but the, 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 the current government uh, continuing the process. I mean, it should be embraced by everybody. It shouldn't be seen as a wish fund. Thank I mean, you. If you understand that government is controlling Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, sir. Let's read there and go back to our local line and take this person. Hello, Hello. your name and where you come from? You want to step away? Uh, can you lower the volume of your radio or just walk away from it, please? Morning, sir. Yeah, morning. Let's hear you. Uh, thank you. My name is Adam Kamara mm -hmm. from Broadway. Mm -hmm. You all, all people, Mr. King, everybody. But it, it is good it to usually bring it here. You don't want Korea to think in Liberia. I want to to think in Liberia. Somebody pay to the people here that put a hand in hand like this. Or else it will not work. Do it to bring it further down. So begging the Lord to make this himself here. Let me check me see with our car that we used to come on the road and stop on like that. And the, 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 um, uh, our document. Thank you. So this we got a book of changing the cards and colors and all kind of technical stuff. Please let it control it. I'm not going too much, too much. I'm tired. My English is not good. I educated man. But I'm okay. telling you, you will not do this thing as by bringing too many laws on the side of my idea. So let it be connected with my work. Please thank you very much. Okay. So you think they should forget about the plenty of law being there. They might just allow the old man to work. Hello. Your name and where you call from? Yeah, my name is Mark Corey from Minnesota. Yeah, let's hear you. Yeah, thank you guys for the show. It is a great show. And thank you uh, for having the great man as your panelist. I mean, as Our your guest. guest. Yeah. So my question is, in the, the executive order, if you read there, you see where the president uh, in the executive order, where it said that suspicious assets so I want to ask your senior guest, if the police or the uh, recovery team, if they are suspicious about a vehicle or let's say an asset, if they can arrest or impound that suspicious vehicle, or property and do an investigation mm -hmm. that would be my question suspicious asset can that suspicious vehicle be in planet why investigation is going investigated on? okay thank you okay. that's a question he will respond to it mr king let me just take two more calls sir mm -hmm. and then uh, we come back to you to respond and then we yeah hello hello Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Let's hear you. Oh, we lost that caller. Um, zero triple five one zero one zero seven five. And the WhatsApp number is on the screen there. You can also call uh on WhatsApp and you'll be live. Let's take this person. Hello. Uh what's happening? Hello. Oh my word, something is not right. Um Okay, so I think we'll come to you, Mr. King, um, to respond to the calls that we have we've had so far, and then we can take on from there. Then you can yeah. do your question. Okay, well, when you say suspicion, if you see a vehicle that looks like a vehicle that you are looking for that belongs to the government, you have a right to stop. If you have suspicion, you stop the person, you ask for the vehicle registration and necessary particulars. If you want to check the VIN number, you can go ahead and check the VIN number. Every cop, every police officer has a right to stop some someone. Even here in America, you are calling from where is this uh, one part of the states. A police officer can pull you over if he suspects you driving erratically or you have a tail light missing or anything like that. So anyone, a police officer can do that. He sees someone, he sees a vehicle that resembles the same type of vehicle that he's looking for. He stops the car, hello, sir. 
morning, do you have your vehicle registration? Is this yours? Could you show me your vehicle registration? If he shows all the information correct, you let a man go. What you see, what, what are you detaining him for? Because you suspect that it's a government vehicle and you just suspect it? So then you can suspect anybody. No, you have to have a reasonable cause to stop that person. If the car resembles the car that you're looking for and it's all that, then you pull them aside and you ask for the different registration papers. If the registration papers do not match the car and there's something suspicious, if you see some forgery or some document that doesn't look correct, then you can go to the next level. And I don't know what that next level would be at this point until I, you can take, give me some more details about the document that is being presented. But yes, but you can't stop the person and just impound the car because you suspect. There's on what? On what grounds? And then you can turn around and be, they can sue you under civil law. It has nothing to do with criminal law. So yes, you can stop a person for if you suspect something, but you cannot arrest the car unless Thank you have probable cause. If Thank the you, investigation sir. leads you into identifying Thank more connection to the vehicle you're looking for, then we go to the next level. Okay, so uh, Mr. King, any final word? You want to do your closing just before we uh, um, let you go? Well, it's been a real great time having you here tonight. I, thank you. I hope, I hope that the panelists here appreciates my response because the law is what a police officer deals with. And also, as long as one is, as a, is a government official, that constitutional law or decision from the Supreme Court is incumbent. It, they have to follow it. They're not, oh, well, I'm not a police officer, so I can go and arrest anyone. No, once you are a government entity, a government person arresting someone, you are subjected to the same requirements as a police officer. That is the government. That is the executive branch in check by the judiciary to make sure that the rights of the people are not infringed upon while you're carrying out your duties. The government has more resources to investigate than an average citizen. So you have all the ways and means. I can take a fingerprint. I can take all kinds of information and send it to my colleagues here at our, our, our Interpol around the world and get all the results. I can tell you when the car was shipped, who purchased it, where it was purchased. The engine of the car, the original color of the vehicle. I can take a color, a chip from it, and they can tell me where it was manufactured, the data was manufactured, the colors that was. I mean, all of this thing can be done. We have the resources. So when you put your case together, it becomes an ironclad case. You arrest the person and send it to court, prosecute them, move on to the next one. I don't have to violate your constitutional rights. And this is the problem with us in Liberia. We feel that because you are in power, you can abuse the law. We feel that if you are in power, you can take the law into your own hand. You cannot do so. Liberia wow. to change, you have to change your way of thinking. And if Liberia cannot change its ways of thinking, from you and me and all of us, Liberia will not and cannot move because no nation can progress without a change. Well, uh, Mr. King, again, we want to say thank you for being here tonight. Uh, thanks for your input on the show. We appreciate you. We look forward to always having you on. Um, I know you follow the show most times. Whenever you deem it uh, <laughs> prudent, you can always let us know. And uh, you are always welcome here on the platform. Thank you again. Thank you very and, uh, much. For Thank having you, you at another time, sir. Thank yeah. you, Michelle. The only lady there. Thank you, yeah. Michelle. <laughs> a long female. Thank you, Thank you, Pop. you, you Thank made you, my sir. day. Thank you. Thank I made you. the same comment today in the group chat today, earlier that they didn't follow process. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. So, uh, Guys, we have to go, man. We have to go. I think we can just end the show right here. No, not end the show. We gotta get out of I think we can just <laughs> look. Anthony is on vacation and he wants us to be yeah, here. 
as long as you know. No, Nelson, I think we should be here a little bit. Let's give our yeah, let's dissect what it means. I mean, let's just 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 let's Representative Yeka Koluba said uh, oh, guy, he's part yeah. of the opposition community now. Uh, he feel... Yeah, he see, feel are, you, are you intentionally he, trying to fire Francis out? I just don't mind. No, no, not, I, I'm not trying to fire Francis up. In fact, Nelson, Nelson, when we, we have a said, guest and a guest leaves, it's up to us now to critique. Yeah, we got to do our post analysis. Look, 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 but Nelson, um, you know, that was why my last question I uh, asked him of his understanding between an instruction by the president <coughs> and, a, and an executive order. And the fact that he, he, told, he told all of us that he doesn't have, have, have an understanding of executive order and an experience with that, he couldn't explain anything. Nelson, all of his answers that he was given, it was strictly based on the law, based on the policeman law or, the, or whatever it was. And he kept using the issue of burning Samuka, right? Which was an instruction. You do not compare an instruction to this because that was his, his four back position. On all of his answer, he said, if a president tell you to do, do this and then it go against the law, you will have to answer question and, and you'll be arrested like, like burning Samuka. But we are talking about an executive order. There is a difference. Because Nelson, when you when you you read Article Five, Section C of the 1986 Constitution, it it basically tells us that executive uh -huh. orders works in line or is is the same, almost the same as legislation, which becomes law. Yeah, but legislation is now is now is now above the law. No, legislations are made. It I mean it becomes okay. law. Right. So, 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 guys, yeah, let, let's, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. We will come back to the legislature. We, I mean, we will, we will I, come back. Whatever the president guys, says, guys, go, guys. and nobody can question Francis, that. The president Francis, is not the president. Francis, Francis, a good example would be the tariffs. Nelson, a good example would be... I can't hear you clearly, Nelson, because everybody is not talking while you're talking. Nelson, I think Anthony needs to go to the back. He really thinks he never feels something to another level. He never speak. Uh, let, let's know. do this, guys. We will not do this again. I, 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 want, us, I want us to make. I, I, I want us to take our. I, I want us to take our one minute each on this issue, Uno, right? Uno, 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 a lawmaker. A lawmaker. A lawmaker who was fought for, who was campaigned for, who was heavily supported, heavily financed by the United Party government. Today made a disclosure that look, I am part of the opposition community. The lawmaker said he's an opposition now, and, and he doesn't care to know what the unity party would think about that. He said the unity party has failed him, and he has decided to go in opposition. He feels secure being with the opposition right now. He feels secure working with Vasco and the likes of the folks in the opposition block, Anthony and all those guys in the opposition block, but he doesn't feel secure working with President Baraka again, based on what has happened in just two months of the administration. Representative Yeke Koloba is saying that he feels secure working with CDC, President George Weah, who he said everything about for the past six years, not with the unity party. Now, let, 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 let's take the conversation from here. Let's take one minute each on this one. Uh, because we, we, we're wrapping up now. We're about to go. Let's start with you, Francis. Or Shelly, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can I can go first. I, I, I actually find that really interesting um, to just... I don't... 
What is he saying? Please go he, ahead, uh, Shelly. You see that man. That's the Pasco, what are you saying? <laughs> no, no, y'all. No. Okay. I will leave you yeah. with Prince and 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 Antoine. No That's it. For Take you. me from up there and bring me down. <laughs> 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 you're remaining there. You was still right there. next to me, and you say you want to wear the same corner. You want wearing, your hair, but it's not view on the window. You was still right next, right after you're me. Chapter right he there, Nelson. Go, go ahead, Shelly. Let's hear you. But no, but seriously though, he is so interesting. I, I, I really don't. I, I, it's so hard to understand him. Like one second, he's like on this side and so i think and i will say that all you need to do for yeke is give him some kind of attention and it, attention that he needed just have um a camera give him a microphone and he's ready to talk tabata that's it that's all he stands for he just talk because you were for um up and you are talking about CDC. You are here talking about Opon for how many years? Six years or so. And then in less than two months, you just flip. So like, I just like, what kind of leader but are I, you? How long does it have to take for someone to flip, Shelly? How long? I mean, does it's called it... loyalty. Okay, it's only two months. Only two months. So for six months, you criticize somebody. In less than two months, you six have been around. Six years? Six years, I mean, sorry. For six years, you criticize somebody. In less than two months, you not turn around and be like, oh, it's kind of like, oh, uh, it's kind of like you going back to your ex, okay? You know that person will buy. You bath moth then. You say a lot of negative things about them. You went on social media and every platform that you have to talk about this person. In less than two months, you now have that pricing as your honing and sugar. I question your loyalty. That's Thank what you. I can say. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, now, now let's let's hear from uh, Mikael on, on this one. Mikael, go ahead. Well, you know, the people get a pirate and say, uh, the bridge that have you cross the river, don't break that bridge down when you cross the river. You might need it when you return it back. Would that mean to say? Joe Braga, the message the CPP and the whole opposition group, the same Braga then group that this group were around here trying to help uh Jake Koduba when children were being denied passport to go to Ghana, when Jake Koduba horse were being uh, 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 uh surrounded by sedition trying to, to storm the whole horse down. I mean, everybody came to his rescue, but but in now, the midst of all the things you're saying, Mikael, the lawmaker says he feels secure working with the CDC. But wait now, let me just finish not, my not, point not with the United Party let, anymore. Okay, let me just finish my point now. Now he's not doing no, he's not doing no justice to Joe Buakai, to President Buakai. Mm -hmm. Joe Buakai just being in power, at least we are gonna criticize his government, that's for sure, because we want the betterment of Liberia. If they do yeah. something wrong, we're all gonna say it. Mm -hmm. But they were part of this group that brought this government to power. I mean, be, do the people justice. Give them some time. They put they, stop, they stay appointing. They stay putting in cabinet ministers and all this. You can't, as a lawmaker, that people depend on you to, to craft on law or bring bills on the on the floor to change things in Liberia. You can't just be passing around, I mean, saying things that some are relevant, some are not relevant. I mean, keep going on with it continuously. One thing you should remember is we're looking up to him. If you join the CDC, you should remember when CDC come back to power, I don't know who else will run to. Number two, you can't do those things to just win power, to just win elections. He thinking to let coming, everybody will be on the body. You can find a place to be where the, where the Liberian people will once again say, oh, he was speaking for us against the government. That's thank you. The politics you can explain here. So thank you very much. You. Let's 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 hold you there, make yeah. one. Uh, Vasco, let's hear from you. Yaka says he doesn't. Oh, Vasco, you're frozen. Okay. Uh, so so let's skip Vasco. Let's go to Rudolph. Rudolph, go ahead, sir. Yes, Nelson. Um, I think Yaka Koloba is a dim-weighted politician in La 
There is someone who doesn't have anything of substance to bring to, I mean, to offer to our body politics. And he, like I said, and I, and I would say on this, this show every day when you ask this question, he feeds on the sentiments of, lab, of the ordinary Liberian people. Uh, this, this, this guy understands that he cannot not provide anything of substance for his district or the people of Liberia. So what he does is that he criticizes uh, leaders for no reason, as in the case of our current president, only because he feels like in like um in the, the next election, the crowd might be with the opposition, and the opposition is larger than the ruling establishment. So that is where he is going to look for a space again. But 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 here is it. What he doesn't understand is that he is losing relevance with 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 within Liberian politics. He doesn't understand that because he is narrow-minded. So we so I mean I don't I don't even want to waste our time on him, Nelson. Thank you. I have nothing Thank else you very to much. Anthony, let's hear from you on this one. Folks, we shouldn't come here because of politics and be insulting people. We say that the lawmaker is narrow minded. This very same Yeke yesterday was your was your king. United Party strategically wanted to eliminate Yeke Kolba during the last uh, or the just in a uh, 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 presentation. Like uh, strategically, Party. yeah. Why? Because mm -hmm. Assistant Minister Karishman today, who is uh, uh, Assistant Minister of the Foreign Ministry, was also a supporter of Unity Party, placed in District 10, when Yeka Kolba also was a supporter of Unity Party in District 10, when they already know that Yeka was on the ballot, but Karishma ran on Unity Party ticket as well, as a supporter of Unity Party, right? Yes, the same Karishma was, 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 was Karishma a member of the Unity Party? Supporter, I said. I don't know if she's a registered but, 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 member. Are you saying here that the but Unity read, Party is what all of our supporters do? Is, is that what you're saying? What, no, let what... me just say this. Let me say mm -hmm. this. Let me say this. Yeah. If they really respected Yeke for who he is, for the work he does for the party, they wouldn't have accepted her running against Yeke when they all supporting JMB. Was he a member of any of those political parties? Thank you. Yeke Koluba declared his support and campaign publicly for JMB. No, 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 no. You're not answering the question. He is not a member Declaring of the Declaring support is different from being a member. He is not a Why member. Why I do know is that he was a he member of not. the ANC. He's not, he he's not a from the ANC. Listen, mm -hmm. he's not a member. He's I, I hope you understand you're interrupting my time so you'll get my time back, right? So you, no, you have your time. You are no, already. But, you, I, but every time I speak, you ask questions, so I can answer your no, questions. No, I didn't even ask you questions. Uh, but answer. yeah, but I'm making my, my closing now, and you keep asking me questions. So I'm getting you know that he supported JMB. He was not a member of the United Party, but he was a strong supporter of JMB. And Yeke has force, and he did his job. And United Party came into being today, right? Today now they call him all sort of name because he's speaking up. J. Mark Fonin just told it's not a myth. The voucher four thousand five hundred is a legit voucher. Okay, it was verified, authenticated, and proven. So it's not a it's not it's not a fake voucher. It was established. We have to be time conscious, Nelson. No, forget about time now. I'm speaking on factual issue now. You want to talk about time? Tonight, the TOR of the of executive order clearly stated that you must use the court to recover asset. Now see so, a so, so, okay. Anthony, which of those issues are you speaking to? Right. Remember yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, guy, guy, guys, no, no, please. I'm using my time to speak to two me? issues at the same time. I'm using okay. my time to speak to two issues. Okay. We okay. have a guest who outlined things here. You know, here's the thing with Liberia. The reason why our country cannot go forward is because we have laws on the book and we refuse to use the laws on the book. That's the reason why lawmakers sat down and strapped a law to say they would drop on a telling when we do not have a telling in Liberia. That's a violation of traffic rules. You understand? So if we have a country like that and people are not using the laws that are already on the book, why should another lawmaker sit down and trap a law that they know they're not going to implement? The president is a law abiding citizen. Gave a TO, uh, gave an executive order with a clearly outlined TO arrow. Follow the TO arrow. You find the asset. You take the people to the court and use the court to recover your assets. You can recover your asset on your own. You're not the court. You understand? And it, it was clear here that the, the, the team did not act according to the TO arrow given by them on the executive order. And I will continue to reference them back to the executive order that is using now 
that executive order specify it gives specificity as to how things should be done so you don't sit here and blame me blame your folks i didn't ask them to do what they did oh, but, 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 Anthony, do, do, do you think it's a, it's a right order. thing at this point for 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 uh representative yenke koloba to come up after the Absolutely. unity party you supported like him to come up and say that look he 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 he's 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 member of the opposition now in just two months of the unity party administration and that in fact he feels more secure working with the opposition than working with the uh, president Baika. You, you think he's being sincere here it's been sincere because of the frustration you're hearing people support us, strong support of GMB and so a member of the unity party calling him names now. He's narrow minded, he's he he's sick in the head, he he suffering from dementia, all the different things now. Yesterday he wasn't today, he is now because he's not on the side. That's how angry they are. They won an election, they are not focused to focus on the people. They came with all the experiences that they had. Their experience is not helping us. We were promised asset declaration, asset published. They didn't publish the assets. They can't do the right thing. We were promised that they're going to give an investigation, a clear uh, outcome of the, of the inaugural program up to this time. We're done. We have 15 countries. We don't have superintendent up to this time. We're still working. Why should we trust what? this? Stop don't lie. We have, we have superintendents. Stop lying. Stop Why are they? They know me I know, I know, I know, no, 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 Rudolph, Rudolph, you can't be interrupting the brother. But no, I mean, I say, no, 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 here's He's the point. The brother ahead. is not saying that some superintendents are not, have, 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 haven't been appointed. No, he said, no, he said, we don't 15, so which means there is none. We have to count it. Yeah, been nominated, but not confirmed. If you are not confirmed, that's superintendent yet. Show me one thing have been confirmed. Show me one. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, let, 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 let's, let's, let's <laughs> so we didn't make him flower like you didn't. Hey, Naruto. Anthony, okay. you are sounding very angry on this show than anybody else. I'm not angry. <laughs> let's, 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 let's hear from, let's hear from, uh, uh, Bila. Bila, go ahead and with your Vasco and then Francis will be last. Thank you. I hope you'll give me three minutes. No, you have one minute. Thank you. No, I mean, anyway, I mean, progress. You see, mm -hmm. the reason I term Yege, for me, I'm not against Yege being in opposition or right? because Yege doesn't know what he wants in life it's as relates to being politician. So that which we have identified over the past right now. Um, Yege has always been that modern contradiction. A replica of modern contradiction is Yege. And I don't know what Yeke really want. The customer is restricted to Yeke. Some person, sometimes will pretend to be the know all, or sometimes point out the issue from different different angles and call people angry and all the stuff because they support the government. You run it all around and play touching all the issues, not even concluding. You call people angry and not giving people the opportunity to some other issues. Then calling people angry because they support the government. But how be it? That is the understanding. You see, the reason a town like Brown politics will always be the way it is, people like Yege who doesn't understand anything about politics, but when they see politics as being always against a government, or for camera to always be on, like uh, the sister said, it is disgusting. And we should not understand, we should not encourage this thing out like Brown politics. If Yege feed, the only way you can gain relevant and popularity at the as part of the Liberian people, it is only to to show some job allegation and being president. Abila, don't you think that Yeke, as a lawmaker, has that right to decide who to support, when to support, how to support, uh, you know, just how to direct his support? Don't you think he's exercising his right as a Liberian, a lawmaker who? Has the right to affiliate and dis uh, and disassociate with any political institution at any time. Again, I have not again Yege being opposition or in position, mm -hmm. but Yege must know his role in Liberian politics as as restricted to him being a lawmaker. That get, get it from the angle. I heard a brother talking about the Unity Party did not support Yege. Are you killing me? Can you point out one candidate that the Unity Party pulled up within District Ten on the Unity Party ticket? If you do that to now, we we'll never count the issue again. I didn't say that you like that. I said that you need a party intentionally. They, they, not now describe and me. The contest. Can't describe me. You always doing it to people. We have to be saver. 
we have to be safer in doing this. Go ahead and and, and make your point. You're not in real life market yet. When your friends, no, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, Bila, 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 let's 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 let face the issue and conclude because we're out of time now. I, I'm facing the issue. The man is rotting me. I'm still alive. We'll we'll serve for no. Do you hear we Bila? are not in. We are not in Gobacho market for all of us to be talking. I think it is prudent. When your colleague is speaking, you give him that respect, like we do to you. So the issue about Yaga Kolba has always been a conflicting issue. Even the very Anthony that's on the platform tonight telling other people throwing jazz at Yeke. If accidentally or mistakenly Mr. Kumi is to become president of Liberia, this Anthony will come on the platform and call names on Yeke. That is Liberia. So you cannot come in Allah, because you're in opposition angrily, you kind of come on the platform to add that you are a working hand peach when it comes to like brain politics. So the issue of Yeke, it will always be the way it is because Yeke has not defined his role in like brain politics. And he will soon go down the drain. Like Thank Bernie Shema, who resigned. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very yeah. much. Let's, let's hear from um, um, uh, Vasco. Vasco, your take on this one, and then we, uh, Francis will take us on. Thank you, Nelson. Um, before I go to the Yekia issue, uh, I mean, they rescue people. They just, they reminded me about the war. When I saw them in the street, Paso, you go on the side. I was just reminded. And these are the people that told us that they know everything. But I go back to Yekia. You see, look, it's, it's very bad to just be angry. You, when you you won the election, but you're just angry. And when you're angry, you always do a lot of things, make a lot of mistakes. And these are some of the things you guys are doing. So today you 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 say all kinds of negative things about Yeke. Yeke is a Liberian. Yeke has his right to associate and to disassociate. So nobody should come here to say anything about Yeke when it comes to who Yeke want to associate himself with. Yeke told you that I supported Baka. But when Baka come to power and start to do the things, they make a plenty of tip. Next you can find some. When Baka come to power and start to do the things, like the way the CDC government was doing it, I will come right back here and I will Go against Baka. And since you guys came to power, everything that Yeke have said, they are all true. No, you can come and tell me, say, what Yeke is saying, he lied. Everything. Hmm. So everything Yeke has ever said, they have all been true. Even the ones he said on the president. Pre -pre 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 <laughs> You want to go back? No, 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 for saying lots of terrible things about yes. the president you supported. Yes. He campaigned. Some yeah. of those things he said served as a major campaign message against the president that you yes. supported. It's one of the reasons why you, Vasco, you didn't get to taste power. You spent yes. several months on this platform propagating your message. The people not listening to you, Josh, all the minute. Because at the end of the day, the people didn't buy the message. So, yeah, you put your finger towards that. Some of the things he said, were, were, were those things true as well? He said all of it were true. That's what Vasco said. It was no, no, that Vasco, no, that Vasco no. clarify, yeah. Vasco, Vasco, go ahead. Thank you for validating Vasco. No. Thanks. No, let's see. We go are ahead, discussing Vasco. this regime. The things okay, Yekia said, mm -hmm. the things Yekia said Vasco, about Vasco, the Vasco, flip, yo. No, the things Yekia said about the citizen yeah. government, that was mm. in the past. And that, that's the reason why... Okay. Yeah, those things true. Yeah, so yeah, those things true power. or not? No, no, that's not yeah, good. Said one good thing. Were those yeah. things true or not? That's true. Let's see. Some of the things they can say against the citizen government was mm -hmm. true. 
Some. Okay. Some. Okay, what, what was it the ones you said that were true? <laughs> what was the ones you said that were true? Let me react to now they, myself. They, 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 they passed no issue. They passed no I can remember the season. They, I know a baby passport, but I will give them back. Okay. That one I can attest to that. That was true. Okay. That was one of the aspects. That, so far, I think that was the only thing that I knew that you can, you can, <laughs> can say every day. True. That was the only truth that you can say against the CDC government. Wow. But when I say so good, all the political things were, were not. No, true. no, that one point was just angry now. You get told you, you get told you. So he's not that. angry now. You get told you got the reason why he got yes, angry yes, with the CDC now. government. He mm -hmm. said the reason why he got angry with the CDC government because he sees a, a, a baby passport. He yes. said it every day. But when it comes to your unity party, mm -hmm. they feel most that you've been there. Mm -hmm. Everything you can say at you. Okay. And I bet anybody will come and we can have another show on it. Mm -hmm. Anybody will come argue with me that the things that you have, you have uh, or been saying against the United you know, Party government, if that lie. But, Vasco, we can't argue that because from, you just from, contradict from yourself. Pre, from pre but, but, but Vasco, let me, let, let me ask you this question. Um, yeah. you get me Were you guys in the CDC really yeah. trust Yeke mm. after campaigning against you for thank six you. years. Thank you. Everything he said. Do you guys have any reason to still trust Yeke and work with him? Uh, Nelson, you see in politics? Hmm? He in won't politics. answer, Nelson. No, Nelson. <laughs> you you got to gotta know this. In politics. You don't have a feminine, feminine, feminine enemy in politics and feminine <laughs> friend in, in politics. You got to know that today. If the Henry Costa that made the Joseph Baca today today could flip in the damn meaning and went against uh, 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 the president, that that alone should let to, to, to bring to your mind that politics don't have friends and politics don't have enemy. Today you and myself can go against each other, tomorrow we can become best friends. So Yeke will be your asset if CC accepting. He will be your asset. Yeke I'm gonna make it clear that he's our opposition. Thank you, sir. I don't Thank like Yeke because Yeke is one of the person I have our, our government to lose. I don't like him. But if he comes to my party, I will embrace him and will work along with him. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. You don't like him. So it means that I don't like he's, him, he's in a dangerous That's place. The I mean, you. there's a terrible position that he's in right now. Because if you don't like, like him don't and he's like going to you, it means that he's not safe. But... I don't like him because what he did to my party. But if Yeke is coming to my party, I will embrace him and we'll work you. together. Wow. Thank you. Let, let, let's move to Francis. Uh, Francis, let's hear you on this. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first thing I never will correct, Anthony, because you talk about he was speaking facts. Charisma real independent. That's a fact. So he shouldn't say you need a party pull up a candidate against. Uh, 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 that was Jeremiah Kuhn, brother. Two, bro, bro uh, you're, all of you so are quiet, so please be quiet. Yeah. Please please protect the brother. Don't interrupt so, him. Yeke Kolba is the core Yeke. artist. Let me talk to District 10, Monserrado County. CDC is so incompetent that even if somebody is lying or making fake information, I'm proud to say I used Yeke Kolba as a tool to get CDC out of office, whether he was lying or not, it's not our fault that you guys were incompetent and couldn't defend yourself against Yeke lies. So I proudly use Yeke to get you out of office because I'm not a unity partisan, I'm an opposition. So anybody but George Ria was my mentor during the election. So it's not our fault. But let me tell you guys something. You sit here and say, yet. Yeke is acquired because he has, like somebody said earlier, he has nothing to offer the or the or the or the, or, or, or the library people. So he 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 feeds on their uh, their 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 gullibility or saying, oh, he is for the library people. You see, he's talking against Jawia. Oh no, you see, he's talking against Jawia But they're not really between the lines. Let me just talk about something. You said if anybody can prove that Yeke is lying on 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 this, on this party. Let me just give you some lies. He was on Spool Talk today. 
like I said in my opening earlier, he said that, oh, why is the LDEA breaking into people's houses without warrant? He stood on, on our platform and probably said those things. And the LDEA boss was right there. They missed us a lie. All of our 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 array, we uh, we have uh, 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 warrants. Okay? So that's one lie. The second lie, or let, let, let's just forget about lie, because he lied a lot. He even said uh, spoon paying people to uh, 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 people on, on, on the network because they're looking for jobs. The second thing, Yekka said that the voucher, the forty five hundred dollars voucher they gave for Jim Mac, uh, uh, was um, I'm sorry, God, was for for them to remove for the uh, 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 for as speaker. That was a lie, also. I, I'm not in favor of that forty five hundred. Don't get me wrong. But since you want to talk about uh, everything he said is true, I'm going to point out his lie. Unlike you guys, I just throw things in the LA Yeka did to y'all. Some of us can sit down and we analyze what he's saying so that we're able to let this return know that this man has said to the, to, to, to the legislature, he's going to be a lawmaker. When he talk about a constituent saying, oh, or somebody telling him, oh, uh, they, they, they're not using worry to break into people's houses. As a lawmaker, as a sound, intelligent lawmaker, what you do, you approach the, the, the legal uh, system and say, hey, I want to see the warrant that was used to uh, 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 to um, uh, raid this person uh, complex. He will get that warrant, but he said they say what lawmaker run around with ER they say, huh? How does that make any sense? And you representing the people. Then you talk about well, so, 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 no, but, 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 but Francis, in the midst of everything you pointing out, the, the the misinformation and 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 everything, uh, I see here that you. You're, you're not okay with this whole information about Yeke wanting to go to the opposition. No, no, no. Don't you think he has the right to decide which, which side he wants to Nelson, support? I care less or... about Yeke, but what I'm saying here is folks mm -hmm. like Yeke do not belong in our legislature. He does not belong. Yeah, yeah, he's there he for the next six years. Princess, what? But, do, what he, but, six years is there. But Nelson, that's what I'm saying now. People will always say, oh, when he was speaking for y'all, but the people, listen to yourself. Let me break down Yeke for y'all. He talked like he's for the people. If Yeke is for the people, right? The 4500 dollars voucher, he went to j -Mac, And j -Mac confirmed it, right? Like I said, I'm not, I'm upset about that issue, right? Regardless of if it was uh, 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 given before the government or whatever the case may be. But as a lawmaker that's for the people, that voucher is not free, right? He's he, he went to the police station and say, "Oh, he said police the jail my brother not honoring the voucher. Why go and, 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 and cash in the voucher? That's like we put money. If it's ill gotten, don't take it. If it's corrupt, don't take it. He took the thirty thousand out of the gate. Every lawmaker, you see, library people, you're struggling, right? But that man will come and tell you, say, I for you." But I will take the corrupt money that they gave it to me. Just John Riata will not give them a brown envelope. He will take it. Then he can't say, oh, you see? Me, I'm the honest lawmaker. Oh, get my brown envelope. I'm going to take care of my family. Why you're suffering this retail? Oh, why you're student in your chair? Oh, but I will take the $30,000 and put it in my bank account. Oh, you see, I'm, 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 I'm an honest lawmaker. Oh, I tell you what the people do in the bribery also. Why he didn't refuse that 30000 as an honest lawmaker? You see, that's what people don't, people should read between the lines. Don't just say, oh, when he was talking for y'all, and, 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 then, and then he was talking for y'all, y'all were happy, oh, now he's talking to y'all. No, no, read between the lines. I probably said that I used the account because CDC was incompetent. Thank but you. now I'm telling you that this man is the emperor has no clothes. Yeke, as Yeke, he been there for six years. What bill has he put on the floor to better the lives of District 10 or the library people? Or better yet, what bill has he co-sponsored with any other lawmakers? And he's talking about, oh, we have a black, a voting black that will that will block the funding for asset management. Yeke has no black. Yeke is a follower. Yeke cannot think for himself to say, oh, let me put this on the floor to block this. He brought the sat down. Yeke like to make noise. So he sat down and said, what can I say again to keep my name in the news so that people can think that I'm doing something good? 
Then you heard somebody okay. on the other side, or two opposite on the other side, saying, "Oh, we want black that 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 that, that funding for as a minority." Oh yes, let black let black that. Oh, we buy a black that will black it. He didn't come up with that idea. Yeke has nothing to offer. But the make not if Joseph Baker had come into office and in the first three weeks he paved the street with gold, Yeke will still be out there because you know what? That's what the people think. He's supposed to do that. Why he think that they should tell one, but we are telling you people this return. You deserve somebody that will go into the legislature and put bills. Okay, when the president, like for example, it's something simple. When the, when the people say that, that uh, they, they accuse the woman of being witch trap and they and they and they uh, 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 beat her, she went to her husband on phone and she passed away. As a lawmaker, what you do, put a bill on the floor against a uh, mob justice. But you can't can you rebuild before you put bill on the floor. But they Thank you can't pay the men over two hundred thousand dollars to do the thing that we do on spoon here. Why Thank can't you. he get on spoon oh, and yeah. do it? We're well, gonna say the legislature to, 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 to pay that. Thank you, house. Francis. That's all you there, Francis. That Francis, means a fraud. You. Like Thank you. Here. Thank they you. That's, that's, that's what you there. That's what you there, Francis. Thank Francis, you. just just so you know, the bill will break the from the district. That district thing with so. So yeah, but they should tell we're here, eh? They were here, eh? And there was a piece of that was worse for them. Let's please in, let's like, please in someone here. How the bribery, can you take it? How do yeah, you find so, people so. when you take all the bribery money? Because they might not honor oh. your voucher, now you start crying. You want to police oh, chase oh, oh, oh. Why so you Thank you, thank you. Francis, let's take this person. Hello, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Let's take the only call we're taking now. This is the only call, and then right after here we're going. Yeah, go ahead. Let's All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've been following your your talk. Even when the guests who left were talking, Mr. King were talking and listening. Yeah. I was about to ask a question and he left. With the issue of Yeke, Yeke will never be a member of CDC. I already called. Call okay. So, 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 which you, uh, do you support CDC or United Party? Me. Uh I don't want to go because you people want to leave and I don't want to talk. From the initial stage, mm -hmm. 1984, mm -hmm. I was a member of Unity Party when Kessily, Edward Kessily was alive. Oh, okay. When so Talon Unity was Party supporter. I, I, I was, I was, I was, yes, I was secretary. I still get my membership card. I get my, 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 my oh, membership okay. ID. So, so you are, see, you are Unity yeah. Party supporter. Yeah, I live in the you are unity yes. party supporter. It, 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 yeah, it, it, too, it, but, but it, are you not the other person? Are, are you not the one who called the other day and said that? Uh, what's his name? Uh, I think Thomas Farah. What's the name of the lawmaker that carried you to a uh, gender ministry and then you started working in the CDC government before you you left uh, the country? And yeah, the one saying. Oh, so it means you are sedition. It means you are sedition, right? See, this one not. See, this was not a life at that time. It was United Party, Action Party, and you named them. But then after the war, United no, Party I, I, went down. Yeah, okay, I, I just, I just wanted us to get to the point because you know we just squeeze you in and we already end the show. But, but, but I, I was but, trying to establish. You asked that question, the one. Yeah, you asked that question, the one. Um, um, yeah, I'm the same person who was general coordinator for 15 years, nominated by Charles Taylor, 2000 in Bikana. Okay, so okay. what I'm saying now, let's go to the issue. Okay, so, so yeah, before we go to the issue, before you make your position on the mm -hmm. issue, no, 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 let's forget about the case of the town, but no, no, you United Party supporter nah, nah. or a CDC supporter? I'm supporting CDC because of the new development in your development. Okay, so you see, the, you see, this development. <laughs> So it means I yes. see this person right now, right? Right, 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 right now. You see yes. this person, right? And I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud to say it because of the numerous development that ah, okay. we're doing. Okay, so so so, so go ahead, Amma. Yes. Go ahead. I just want to establish yes. which no political to... party you support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, man. I support CDC from day one. I was even working a commissioner office before I came, as I told you. I was working. I was working. This way too. When the commission of it as an assistant, okay. before I came last year. Okay, why, why, why the Yaketing here? Let's hear your take on the Yaketing. Yaketing will never be already called Yakako. Yakako, I get the number for 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 the told me that while they were in a meeting, how to call yourself. That man, you can enter with Safoko. And they were, they, 
too intelligent. He didn't seem too intelligent for them to say, hey, walk out, go, 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 go. They didn't drive him like driving a dog. They are certain to sit down. But he oh. would never know that the answer general would pay me. So, they so, would never accept him. But so, what he did to our president, he had this great thing that man openly in the streets. Okay, okay man, I, 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 I won't tell it in small, small because the information you gave me is very important tonight. Um, I'm telling you. You say you called, you called Jangako, the, the chairman yes. of the CDC. That's not true. Uh, yes. uh, 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 Jangako told you that they will never, they will never accept Yeke in the CDC. In fact, they invite him to the meeting. He just walk in there, right? He listen to me. He never told me that they would never accept him. He told me, uh, as I said, how he managed to appear in the meeting. He said, while the meeting was going on, he entered the meeting hall with Sa uh, 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 Safoko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he entered. But they could not put him out. Oh, well, they couldn't drive him like a dog. He's an honorable man, despite his behavior shaking like that. He's an honorable man, so they didn't drive him. But they would sit and know whether they should accept him. Oh, so uh, I asked him, okay, okay. I asked him, would you accept him? He said, for what he did, for what he did to our president, disgracing the man, degrading him publicly. Mm -hmm. And they don't think so. It was something between him and me. Oh, okay. That one, a private, a secret. But now, no, but now, it, 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 oh, oh. So, so it means that, it means, it, so, so, man, from the way, from the way the chairman, Jangako spoke, hmm? mm -hmm. did he sound mm -hmm. like somebody that would be willing to accept Yeke to work with him? The campaign ended on Sunday. Yeke was still campaigning. Hmm. Campaign ended Sunday. Yeke went on his motorbike with his boys going on that Monday. Campaigning uh -huh. all over. So it means it means that it means that the chairman up to now the chairman still feeling bad about the way Yeke did the whole campaign thing, right? From the, from the time you talk to him, bad. the way he talked to him, the way he sounded, right? Everybody feeling bad for the way he talked about our president. They lies. That's not true. The lies they put up by the president. All those negative things about our president. Okay. That one will accept him. She says, Come on. I don't think so. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It would never. Thank you. It would never. Go. Never. <laughs> you know, 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 you Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said thank you. I, we just thought to squeeze it in because uh, we're about to go okay. down. Yeah, so thank you okay. so much. We okay. appreciate your point, yeah? We we'll always take your call. Okay, on the show. Keep coming. Keep I will free take your call all the call, time. To call on the show every time. Yeah, you can tell me. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you all 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 right. Right. Yes, you man. Take our time. Like I you are not you not responding to the caller. I'm asking you. I am asking you. Okay. Is Yeke secure? Hundred percent. The point is a contradiction. Guys, when was the last time you spoke? When was the last time you spoke with the with the chairman? The Omar spoke with the chairman. The Omar just talked to the chairman. Yes, Omar is giving us. The Omar is giving us. The Omar is giving us second hand. Says you were in America. I know you. You have been spoken. Why is the information? Nelson, second hand because the king with the chairman. Before he came to her, she gave it to her. But, but honestly, the Omar is saying that everybody in CDC is mad. The Omar said that they said, don't think so. If I, I want party. The Omar said, I want party. You must go mad when you are. No, no, no. Let's do this. No, no. Let's do this, right? The old, Vasco from the beginning said he hit Yeke. He yes. hit Yes. 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 Yes.
Everybody. You say you don't like him. I don't like him. Joe. I don't like him. I like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't him. I don't like 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 him. Let's do this. 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 Let's Thank you. Thank you very much. You may have a You may have a Hello. I got his phone. I got to give me a chance. No, you respond. not respond to nothing. Hello, you here? Okay, please go ahead quickly. Yeah, go ahead quickly. Okay, quickly. Um, I'm not going to comment on this okay, issue. I just want to comment quickly on the issue you guys discussed about the asset recovery. Oh, okay. Here is my take. In our country, Liberia, we need to build institutions. Institutions do matter. This whole uh, short-term approach to public policy has not helped the country. Okay. If we want to retrieve asset, it's a good thing. Let's institutionalize it. What's wrong with using a NCC? What's wrong with using the Ministry of Justice, the police, the GSA? Thank you. You got financial intelligence unit. Let's use that. Thank this you. This whole political approach to take it does not help. Thank you, sir. Let, 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 let us hold you there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you, sir. Not calling it, it's, it's, no, no. no, no. no, no. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. okay. We're 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 okay. we are okay 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 Wow. You know, you're not 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 you